Hello, we're live. So... This is... This is interesting, and you probably already know by the title of the stream, or by uh, the... Uh, By the... Okay, I guess that's just not going to work. That's cool. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, by the by the title of the stream or the VOD, you know, post the facts if you're watching this. Uh, this is going to be the final finale for Cradle to Crypt. I do apologize for anyone who was keeping up on the series or who what is trying to keep up on the series, you know. I don't know, I could be talking to someone like five years from now. Who knows? Uh, this game has been a really good game. We played it for, I think, over a year. I think the most difficult part is just, well, one, Mondays is just rough for a lot of people. And two... At some points, at least, a lot of us had a lot of game commitments. <laughs> and so having one day off the week was was kind of necessary for some people. So this game has had a very rough scheduling. This is the first time we've actually, like, we're actually going to play, quote unquote, since, like, last year, I think, technically. Unless you got some sessions out. No, I think, yeah, we had another session where we got together and we were like, all right, why don't we just end it? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, we probably should end it. And then, you know, uh, we're like, all right, well, let's plan. Let's plan what we want our epilogues to be and let's plan, you know, what we want for how how we want how do we want the how we want to go out you know and uh so we decided that and then literally for like two more weeks we're like yeah and, uh, it's not a good week for me sorry so we're here we're gonna get it done i've really enjoyed this campaign a lot and to be fair the reason why we're ending it now is, for the most part, I think everyone is satisfied with their character. We got a lot of the character arcs out of the way. We had a lot of bonding moments. And honestly, with Finwith, you know, getting closure, I don't think, is a good way to put it. But I guess knowing that what remain of the sculling at this point are in good hands, it kind of left most everything done, you know? The only things that remain was to really fight some dragons and fight the final boss. And the final boss, I, I think I have a bad problem with making final bosses that are just, like, bigger than life. Not really too personal to my game, my players, and in, in any real way. Though, are I would argue... The Unraveler? Well, kind of the Unraveler, but, like, I don't know. That last fight felt so anticlimactic. I guess it's because y'all were so jacked out of your minds that literally throwing ancient dragons at you, I couldn't do Listen, anything about it. It was very climactic to me, at least, because, like, I couldn't move for all but the last, like, two turns because as soon as I got in combat, everything died. <laughs> I fucking eviscerated shit. I thought the final uh, fight of that campaign was hype. You fought yourself. Yeah. Well, yeah, to be fair, I. it was literally like Hiram's character arc finishing in that fight. You didn't even fight the Unraveler. You fought yourself and died. Yeah, it'd be like that. So I can see where you can get some closure out of it, I guess. 
another character claimed nah, by that's you. Wild. I loved it. You can't blame. You literally killed yourself. No, nah, I was on you. No. You made me roll for it. Cringe fail rolled one off. <laughs> made me have a fifty percent chance, and I failed that. <laughs> Cause you murdered yourself. What was I supposed to do? Just be like, all right, by gods be by gods. No, but I, I gave you the option. Like, oh, you could go see your tree. You could go to the root of it all, figure it out. And you're like, nah, nah. That's what I thought. What I'm hearing is that I am in the right and you just brutally murdered uh, me. All right. I did not. Oh, at least you have a 25% successful character survivability rate, Alex. <laughs> Yeah. Did it? <laughs> yeah, I have two characters that actually survived an anime game, no less. Oh, we'll see about now. that. Oh no! <laughs> so this session is is going to be a little different. First and foremost, I'm going to say, don't have our cam face cams on. Honestly, I really just can't even get mine to work at the moment, so I, it's whatever. I like, just got back from, like, a trip. My room looks like dog shit. I'd rather not call myself out like that. You know, I think this is, I think this is just perfect for the end of the game. <laughs> just... <laughs> it's very disjointed, a little disheveled, and, uh, you know... We've hobbled ourselves over this finish line, or we're going to anyway. So how this is going to work? Rather than playing this out as a normal session and everything like that, I'm going to be going over the campaign's, like, epilogue in the sense that, like, every all the characters have done pretty much everything they wanted to do. Now is just the last adventure, you know? the last the last push to fight a final boss you know so during this time there's gonna be a variety of moments where I ask the players to make a check make a roll maybe we'll do a little role play in scene and I'll ask the group you know at this point, what would you like to do? Would you like to go down this route or this route? Or maybe y'all can think of something. I don't know. Uh, this I, I don't foresee this particular session going for super long. But I could see it easily going for like three hours. So that being the case, I think we should I think we should get done. Get this yeah, we're finished. Off to a great start. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> again, we did it where it's like, are we actually playing today? I don't know. Let's check chat. All right, cool. Everyone gets up and hops on. And then we talk about Lancer because literally everyone in this call is playing Lancer tomorrow for our one sh or Well, we're doing a session zero tomorrow. And then we're having a one shot next Monday. And Which, if everybody likes it, then we can do a campaign and I can make someone I really care about. And then get overly invested in a character. Again. I'm I'm legitimately scared because I could see getting into a long campaign of this so easily. Yeah. Especially because like the narrative is so intriguing. Uh this is my kind of sci-fi. I think Lancer is my kind of sci-fi where it's just there's like a lot of techie stuff true, but like most of it is just relegated to mech combat, which honestly the the some some of the science goes way beyond science and just becomes straight up space magic. So I think something I appreciate about it is everything in Lancer feels like it's from Lancer. Yeah, and a I lot agree. Sci-fi has that like this is 14 different genres and different sci-fi things just kind of crammed together and they oh, don't totally. have like a cohesive like aesthetic or like they don't feel like they belong to the same setting yeah for those who watched it, it most sci-fi settings feel like firefly 
setting. The Firefly setting. It's it's just a lot of it is like space junker, you know, style. There's tech, there's high tech, but everyone kind of uses these very super casual rundown spaceships, you know. And uh yeah, I don't know. A lot a lot of it feels like that. Even Star Wars really feels like that sometimes. Lancer's like, hey, uh, let's give everyone mech combat because, you know, there's not really any good mech RPGs out there. Let's give them some sick art. And then let's just start doing really fucky things with mechs and see how that goes. And it's great. It's mostly the Horus, but like some of the other mechs can get some some really crazy stuff in there just don't uncheck your nhps and you're fine right i have to say the cannibal mech is so dope it's a little mech it's a size one half mech what the caliban caliban yeah yeah it has a weapon called the cannibal i think yeah cannibal. i'm considering actually doing a mix of it in the uh Zhang. The the Caliban, it's it's a size one half mech that hits as hard as a size three mech. This is exactly what I told Devin. Nothing makes me happier than the idea of this like regular person, near like comparatively, to these like four story tall mechs, and they're like, what the fuck's that child doing here? And then it cannonballs through your knee, shattering it instantly. <laughs> no, it's even worse than that. Like, it's not like it, it's like this indestructible bullet of a character. No, 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 no. It has a, a weapon that is like a charge. I think it's like a, it's a melee. It's like a hammer or it's like a fist. I can't remember. It, it knocks. It melee and then like a shotgun. It knocks other mechs back. It is a shotgun. It's a, a CBQB. That's what I remember. Yeah, it knocks other mechs close. back eight hexes. Eight it hexes. Can, it can deal damage just by reloading so aggressively. Yeah. Shell. It literally can eject a cartridge at anyone with a two hexes, beating them for damage on a mech. <laughs> so fucking funny. And it can send mechs flying eight hexes. That's 80 feet away for a mech that's like the size of an apartment building. Sounds like somebody needs the uh, the super large mod on that gun. Make it nine hexes with overkill. I think it's <laughs> the one that comes with the super super uh, super large mod on it. Oh, uh, the Calibon. Yes, that literally. We literally just said the name. You never Sir, to I only vaguely listened. As soon as my name was mentioned, I started listening. <laughs> Anyway, oh anyway. We're off to a greater. So I know, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Let's let's get this done. Alright. So where we last left off. You guys had finally seen the conclusion of the sculling threat. You you all actually didn't even solve it really. You could have. Any one of you could have marched into that camp and dunked on everyone in there. Uh, but instead, it was solved by Finwith's mother. Yeah. The Red Witch of the Mountains. A sculling that purely embodied the, the ideal of being the top predator. Who kicked the prior chief's ass here and back again? Wasn't difficult. No, she she dunked him like any of y'all would have, pretty much. And all the other skulls, you're like, yeah, I ain't fucking with that. We'll we'll do what you say, angry lady. And she's like, all right, we're gonna go to the north, and we're gonna go, we're gonna go see if the monster hunters in the north might take our sorry asses in, maybe make us all actual fighters again. Rather than relying on dragons like the last two big chiefs did. Uh, 
and then they started marching off north through the peak of the world and then towards uh towards the ymir the the clan of ymir That said and done, unfortunately the Skulling don't have much in the way of information on slaying dragons, which is what you guys were kind of partly going to go for as well. You found out that there were these two horns, you know, that were used to call the dragons. And they were given by some southerner for some unknown means. As the uh, the chief of the blue feathers was, you know, trying to wheel and deal his way into power, and they were eventually going to attempt to take the uh, city of Molenhein with the dragons. But you know, As got dunked, and Finwith's mom was like. These are dragon artifacts. I ain't giving them to y'all. And y'all are like, eh, she probably wouldn't even use them anyway. So you let her walk off of them. And now you turn to Alexei, who's turned into a literal human radar system to try to find the dragons. <laughs> Fortunately, he can sense anything within hundreds of miles. Because Anima. So. Got a energy, energy high five of uh, my good buddy, uh, Arthur, right? Yeah, they just keep tabs on each other. Well, it's when I like flaring it up, it's like, yo, what's up? It's like, oh, yeah, still alive. <laughs> So, doing the best you can, using, you know, what information that you can, y'all begin hiking through the peak of the world. It's a somewhat grueling journey, but you begin climbing these massive peaks, dealing with any ravenous high mountain wolves that might come your way you know what other I, literally there's no random encounters i could throw at y'all that would be uh anywhere near challenging at this point in your ventures legitimately i don't even think actually a high elemental would be threatening to you guys at this point maybe I do have an important question to ask in our hike up this mountain. Do sure, we see sure. the creature that had the wings in the lodge at the start of this campaign? Mm. You do not. Darn. Does watch that shit be like fucking extinct anyway? <laughs> More than like. I'm pass that down. <laughs> no, funny enough, those wings actually belong to an art chimera. Ah. I've been there, done that. Kind of? <laughs> oh, it's care. fine. We totally won that fight. <laughs> yeah, a character almost totally didn't die in that fight at all, and then instead it just flew away. That was one of the, just the many fights that Dawn was a pile of blood. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, and Garvey had like a hole in him. Do you like that? I don't think he got a hole from that one. He did, and then time got rewound, and he got spared yeah. any critical in injuries from that fight. Uh. But anyway, uh, so as you going up through these mountains or whatever, you get close to what you feel the den is, and you all make a plan of action how do you all intend to try to pursue this first dragon i'd like to analyze and come up with a battle plan okay all right tactics don't fail me now
in there. 268. <laughs> Only 268? Yeah, I rolled a 20. Uh, You're not ooh. even in the roll 20, sir. Oh, oh, shit. I was going to tell you to put that in the chat, but you're not even here. Just pretend I put it in the chat. No, we're going to wait awkwardly for you to put it in the chat. <laughs> I had to clear all my cash stuff so I can log in real quick. I had to clear my cash so I can him. use a VPN for Netflix. Cry louder. All right. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, all right. So you, you take a look at the surroundings. It's not optimal. Unfortunately, the dragon has a big benefit, whether it's in its cave or not. Either you're all channeled into its breath weapon or it has free reign of the sky and sorry go ahead is there any way to see if the cave is like a massive cave system with other exits or is it just like a big hole in the mountain like is this the old there's like one entrance to this cave uh unless you have some ability that allows you to see like the topography of the local area unfortunately alexi's radarness only finds life forms yeah <laughs> If asked to, Anastasia could scout around Shadow Warping as he does. Because my thought, that, that might come in handy, because uh, my thought is what if we kill the dragon by suffocating it? Oh, well your tactics would reveal to you that these dragons are already demonstrated to have an ability to rip through rock and earth as if it was uh, nothing. Fair enough. Burying this dragon would do little more than disgruntle it for a bit before it bursts out of the mountain in one direction or another. Alexi does have the ability to uh, defend everybody against area attacks as well. So, for your tactics roll, uh, it's not optimal, but if y'all can manage to weather the breath attack of the dragon and push into the cave, for most of your your group, it will be much more beneficial to fight it inside the mountain as if it has the ability to just fly around and breathe what you know, breathe fire or what have you on you. It's going to be a hassle. Oh, yeah. Your group lacks any major long range com combatants. So, unfortunately, your tactics, <laughs> you're just kind of left in a situation of. We either dive into the flames and take it head on, or we flush it out and then try to deal with it while it's flying about. He'll mention as much to everyone. I guess another possibility as well is as long as. Sebastian is on his toes and fully decides to support the group instead. Inside the cave, your ground control could provide immediate instant created cover if you held your actions to, you know, use your psychic power to manifest cover for your allies. Huh. Uh, Sebastian would be more willing to do that. Uh, that he, uh, there's a three people in this party that can deal some pretty fucking heavy damage. Might as well protect them. I like that plan. Reasonable. Yeah. Mm 
Alrighty. So is that y'all's course of action? Yeah. Alright. I'm just, just happy to uh, do fire armor, bark skin, Kongsbjorn form, and then just go crazy, go stupid. <laughs> just point him at a target. He's so excited to kill a dragon. I will say, if you go your big form, you won't benefit from any cover that Sebastian could create. Not reliably, anyway, because uh, if you go Kongsbjorn, you're going to fill up the whole tunnel, and he would just, he might as well just, just collapse the tunnel to cover your body at that point. Oh, that's fair. You could go uh, Snake Tails and do the battle. reduction actually is kind of shit. Uh, do we find both of them together, or just are we able to They seem them? to have separate caves. Okay, well, I can uh, just fuck one up with the uh, ice real good with the Arctic Chimera. And then if you uh, want to risk it, I can go Ignis against the uh, cold one. Honestly, the true Cerberus tail is probably the uh, a better one to focus on. Another thing to mention as well. Uh, Y'all don't know which cave this one belongs to. Unfortunately, haven't spent enough time with the dragons to know which their, you know, key, key signatures are. So you don't know if this is the blue one or the red one. Is there a way to look for signs of what it might be without alerting it? I mean, I can just accumulate and then turn when we have some proof of what it might be. That's fair. Uh, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be much, unless it's just shedding its scales about, but uh, you don't see any massive dragon scales lying around, unfortunately. Any particularly heavily heated areas? It's an icy mountain top. They also don't hunt around their caves. They fly off somewhere else. Nothing stupid enough to be near a dragon's den. Well, it's also a good question. Did it make the cave itself, or was the cave already here when it moved in? Uh, this cave looks to be created. It's, it's a large, like, well, pretty much hole punched into the side of the mountain. Unfortunately, Unfortunate. uh, it's not, like, particularly molten, nor is it iced over. You don't even know if ice would really do much to the rock. It might as well have dug this out with its claws. Sure, I leveled up my ground control, didn't I? Sounds like something I do. Ah, just a little bit. All right. Y'all have anything else? Currently going through my character sheet. 
It's been a minute, that's fair. Uh, I mean, unless dragons follow the Dark Souls rules and that they're incredibly weak to lightning. Uh, <laughs> I I think playing full, full support here would work better. I, I like that plan. Granted, uh, thankfully, the ice armor is rated E for everyone, so... <laughs> Already. Well, your uh, fellow Frost Collier are not quite so keen to go diving into the jaws of a dragon. Well, they don't have a lot of ranged options, so. No. Either way, it would suck for them. Sebastian will do his best to explain why fighting them in the cave is preferable. I mean, at this point, once again, gotta <laughs> Mamir is more than he he's been with y'all long enough. He he kind of understands that y'all are something special. And when you explain it, it was like, oh, yep, sounds like a good idea. We'll just, uh, we'll, we'll stay out, and if the dragon flies off, we'll try to keep track of it. Ursula is a little less inclined to leave everything to y'all. But Mimir gives her a look, and she has no, nothing to say to the veteran Frost Collier. Huh. look in his eye kind of indicates that, uh, I should leave it to y'all. And while she might not try trust all your party, she trusts what Mimir thinks. And Mimir trusts the uh, werewolf. Does he think That's he going a little far, but he he uh <laughs> he thinks at least if whatever you are, you're better off fighting dragon than he is, so He's lived. He's he's lived to be this old for a reason. You're the old in a society where the, everyone dies young. Fair. Yep. So you begin marching up through the cave. Anything y'all do as you approach? I stealth. Okay. Uh, probably getting ready to throw on Kalinger. Uh, yeah. This might be cave, one of our I more will, dangerous stunts. I will channel or uh, focus on my uh, on ground control. Get some benefits on my potential. Okay. Stealth and accumulate. Ready to rumble. <laughs> Stealth. I mean, he's not good at it, but one of us is trying, so. It won't last. We all know. <laughs> now we're just gonna duke it out with Drake. Alexi would probably trust you, but he also has a negative 30 on stealth. Uh, and worse yet for all y'all, uh, you're walking up snow straight into its cave. Unless you have some form of levitation, like Sebastian. Uh, uh, sneaking up is damn near impossible i mean technically <laughs> we have the bastion <laughs> it's true that he is he's focusing on his ground control on the sussier's weight fair. reduction uh oh, that's fair weight reduction is useful let's see here how many units only helps four. you for short jaunts though uh I well th so the thing with weight reduction is uh, so essentially the snow here provides a negative 30 bonus to stealth checks or penalty to stealth checks rather so on the saucier being the sneaky sneaky person that he is is literally just walking on the snow quietly up towards this cave <laughs> So does mine compound to a negative 60. 
Uh, are you just untrained? Yep. Ah, uh, then yes, they do add together, actually. Not bad, not bad. That comes up to a total of six. <laughs> it's not a negative. That's true. Honestly, with the negative 60, uh, that's a pretty impressive roll. Honestly. Not bad. Three from being perfect, but you know. This is his life. So you do, Sebastian, are you going to be lifting Lexi up or... I mean, I or are you just going to be focusing on it, on your uh, ground control? I have like four and eight slots. Uh, I'll lift both, uh, uh, both Alexi and Finn with up to help, uh, help them sneak. That's fair. Okay. Nate slots help. I, yeah, I have four. Was that including the uh, penalty to self Finn with, or do you also have uh, weight elimination? Oh, sorry. What was the penalty? It's negative thirty. Oh. You have to walk up snow. All right, so you lift them up. Anastasia is doing the legless thing of just walking on snow. And uh, quietly, for the most part, at least, y'all make your way towards the cave. I'll need a stealth check from Sebastian as well. Uh, I wonder if this is one of those weird situations where the creature doesn't have any notice. Given it's something that has to hunt over the course of miles, I feel like it's probably the opposite. You think so. But a superior water elemental had zero. Didn't, didn't do great. All right. So as you're all approaching, you're silent, which is the biggest thing. Uh, Sebastian just leads you all right into the cave and then setting you all down. Seems okay at first. The entrance of the cave seems to be iced over. Uh, there seems to be some kind of either dense ice that was melted over or some other kind of smooth icing that leads into a roughly hewn stone cavern. And as you begin kind of making your way in towards the, uh, in towards the cave, it's really dark for Anastasia this is no issue and I guess for Finwith too if Finwith has a uh, night eyes on but what about the other two I don't got a way to see in the dark let me see I know I have a torch in my inventory. It's true. Would cast light into the cave. Yeah. And you don't need to hold us up anymore. Fair. Uh, I just have the ability to sense energy. It's the main thing. I don't think I can see in the dark. Don't we still have that lantern? The sleep one? True. Yeah. I mean, light is light. My question is, do y'all just use light or not? blind ain't a great idea. Damn it, I could have used my snowshoes. Opportunity wasted. 
<laughs> One more piece of equipment invalidated by the party. We're probably better off with light. We learned in the Kong's Bureau fight it's not good to fight in the dark. Yeah. Probably go with the light. Okay. So, uh, as you all begin, you know, heading deeper into the cave, casting your light about, you feel like you're getting close, Alexi, to whatever it is. And it's not long before you hear the shifting of something massive in the cave. As you're all pretty trained warriors, uh, there's a sudden shift and a deep windy noise and you all jump into combat as suddenly a barreling flame juts around the corner Sebastian being ready for this projects a a, a, a wall roll for me it's like potential real quick can do I get a bonus to it yep channel. I mean honestly I don't even really care if you botch or not yeah fair <laughs> I make the minimum okay you're fine uh Suddenly, a rock, uh, a, a rock wall juts out, channeling the flame around you. You can feel the massive heat bending around y'all as blue flames flicker around you. It's shortly after that that y'all go into battle mode. What are you doing? What's your plan of attack? Can't yeah. see the dragon yet. It seems to be hitting you, uh, channeling its flame around a corner. And this seemed to be different flames than the ones that we experienced before. The ones before were red. Were orangey red, normal fire looking. Mm. Oh, the associate would run in to try and draw its attention away from them so they have an opening to run at. Uh, probably throwing Colinger at this point. Okay. Okay. What about the other two? Uh, continue to uh, use ground control to block uh, breath attacks from people. Okay. And yeah, with Shape shifting and giving no other direction. Uh, closing in for a brawl. Not going in uh, fast enough that uh, he won't have the uh, ground control. But as they're comfortable advancing and he's not told to pull back, he carries onward. All right. Yeah, let's get some let's get some combaty music in here. Unfortunately, Alexi is the slowest of the group. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I just remember it, man. It's been a while. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh shit, I have to actually go to the Discord website to change the music. <laughs> Progress. I, I, this, this, this particular game just shows me like, man, I've come a long way. I, I'm so much better organized now. Alright, so, uh, 
Anasase takes out like a rocket going around the wall and as you round the corner not far off behind is uh, the dragon's mom quickly and using your superhuman reflexes and ability to dodge as the jaws come out at you to clamp your torso the cave is full of all kinds of opportunity for your ability as you just drop through the floor using the shadows to drop in behind the dragon though not even here seems to be safe as its massive tail whips around and crashes each uh each blow shattering rock regardless your defenses hold as the rest of the group comes out around the corner uh finwith comes out what form did you take um if it was a hot fire then goes the uh words english arctic chimera Actually, no, the, the ice rays were low, that's right. So he's going the um, true Cerberus. Okay. You come out and uh, the dragon snaps around to look at you guys coming from that direction. You begin rattling the bone tail, and the dragon just watches you very cautiously before suddenly something happens to it internally as it, uh, you see its eyes shake inside of its skull for a moment. It did not like that, and you did some pretty massive internal damage to it. Getting angry, the dragon rears up to... Uh, blast another cone of fire in your guys' direction but Sebastian holding ready for it uh, as the dragon rears its head near the roof Sebastian takes a cheeky moment and juts a set of stone into its skull from above cutting the flame right off at the source as uh, Alexi comes out clad in icy armor and ready to fuck shit up. Alright, what's y'all's course of action right now? Uh, I do have one question. Okay. Because uh, this changes some pretty important stuff. Uh, is this creature considered huge or larger? Uh, yes. Alright. The Freesta is in full form. Uh, Sebastian's going to continue playing support. He's okay. going to use ground control to protect and uh, be a bit cheeky if the opening like, shows itself. Uh, with Sebastian playing support, uh, Prof, uh, well, I'd say he's going to go on the offense. Okay. Anastasia Finn with. And so he's going to keep attacking it from behind, if anything, to draw some of its attacks on him. Uh, luckily, Finwood doesn't have to really uh, reposition to target for uh, soft spots, but just keeps up the ominous uh, shaking uh, in addition to his slightly warped form. Uh, trying to unsettle it predator to predator. He growls, and the uh, vibration of it matches along with the uh, rattling tails. All right. So as this new round uh, starts up, Finwith starts off uh, with the growl, the shaking going off, and the dragon kind of recoiling a bit somewhat. It doesn't know exactly what you're doing. It just it knows it doesn't feel good. And uh, as it's backing away slowly, you see it wincing as 
whatever you're doing seems to be doing some work. And Anasase jumps in, uh, dealing some pretty massive blows with your big ass sword to its rear ends. Uh, the dragon is getting heavily pressured, uh, whipping out with its tail again. It just tries its best to deal with Anasase in the back. Go ahead, real quick, roll for me a defense roll, Anasase. Alright, it's gonna be dodge. Yep, whatever defense you use. Go ahead. That is a 340 dodge. <laughs> so the dragon lunges out with a flurry of tooth and nail, sweeping with its tail, doing anything to stop <coughs> stop you. And after your massive blows, you dance around the swings effortlessly. Uh, with such a level of proficiency and grace that it looks like you're toying with the dragon at this moment. Uh, Alexi gets into full offensive mode. What's your plan of attack, Alexi? Let's see. There's probably not a great way to do like an 80 foot area attack. Uh, my allies here. So uh, he's going to use the, the first version of the Frostlet and make uh, Four long, uh, long distance swings, creature. All right. See so you rear up and you launch a series of uh, swings against the creature. Uh, go ahead, and make an attack roll for me, please. pretty solid and are these uh cold no uh these are just his regular weapon damage oh just re regular okay all right uh you unleash a, a series of slashes in its direction and while its scales are particularly hard your weapon seems to be cutting through them like butter uh as they uh the slashes are doing a pretty sizable amount of damage the dragon is starting to look desperate now and in mere moments you've already put it much on the back foot looking around uh sebastian you recognize there's a level of intelligence in the way it's looking around it's analyzing the battlefield oh it said you'll be right back that's very awkward alex Is it something we could kind of guess as well, or just Sebastian? Uh, Sebastian has the insight for it. You back? I said to wait for a second, now I'm back. Uh, what okay. Ask me? Wasn't anything. Uh, as, as you guys are pressuring the dragon, you notice its eyes have this level of intelligence behind them. It's analyzing the battlefield, deciding to make, uh, you know, deciding on its course of action. You realize that this dragon, while physically is not capable of dealing with y'all, its most frightening quality might actually be its intelligence. And suddenly the dragon shifts, pushing all of its weight in the surrounding cave wall or, uh, next to it. It bashes and wrecks the surrounding walls, causing the cave to become unstable. Unfortunately for the dragon, you were already planning on fucking around with the earth anyway. So as the cave is beginning to collapse around you, you focus and you ground control the surrounding cave, preventing it from collapsing in on you guys. Completely negating the dragon's action yet again. Being the ultimate cuck in this fight for this poor dragon. 
Uh, however, hmm, would it be safe to let a few of the uh, the crumbling stone, like from above, just fall onto the dragon in key positions? Uh, you don't think it would necessarily do much to the dragon, okay. but marking from Alexi's like the force of his swings or whatever, the dragon scales are pretty strong, pretty durable. Fair enough. So it bashes around and you you concentrate holding your hands up you stop all the surrounding earth and and just for good measure uh force the earth to kind of like condense and compact around refortifying the walls the dragon is left with uh very little recourse as it's unable to back up as on the saucy is hitting it from behind alexi is hitting it from the front finn with sees a prime opportunity uh, as the dragon's defenses kind of open up in its struggle. What do you do? The tail snakes forward in towards it, the uh, rattling increasing as it's going to uh, he's going to try and aim for a particular bundle of like if it's the core or underneath the jaw. Just trying to deal as much damage. Preferably if he can, the brain and the uh, eyes. He's already charged soft tissue. Might as well go for it. Okay. Aiming, aiming your, you know, sonic waves. The dragon is harried at the moment. And honestly, it looks like for a moment it completely forgot about the rattling dealing with being slashed from its, its rear and its front. As uh, you see the dragon suddenly... Uh, act like it was stunned as if it was hit by something the dragon just goes stiff for a moment uh before it collapses to the ground uh almost as you've given this dragon a concussion from the channeled force straight to its brain it manages to get back up but it's very off kelter you did some pretty good damage to its brain and its equilibrium has probably been thrown well off with very little recourse the dragon lets out one final roar that echoes through the cave it's painful to say the least i need everyone to make for me real quick a withstand pain I couldn't swing for a composure, could I? Uh, no. This is a withstand pain check. Not letting me roll the higher one. I see. Depending on your on your withstand pain, maybe we'll roll composure afterwards. But uh, I roll. I botched it first of all. <laughs> I rolled a two. That's unfortunate. Roll again for me. Uh, I'm going to bend. Oh, that's fair. A little better. I'm so sad. I rolled a 100 and then I rolled a 5. Ah, rough stuff. Uh, immunity to pain. I take halfsies to any, uh, results. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Okay. I do horrific things with my body on the regular, so. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. All right. Uh, the dragon's bellow reverberates through the cave it's loud enough to shake the very earth itself and there's just a momentary uh there there's a moment where you all need to brace yourselves against the sheer blast of it as it's uh 
it's it's threatening to burst your eardrums from how powerful the sonic blast is most of you grit your teeth and manage to bear through it alexi being uh accustomed to you know such such methods and and being a frost collier your training really holds true you weather it and are pretty much unaffected fin with as well it hurts but you don't you're able to act normally as well as you're able to uh you two are able to come in on this dragon what do you do together how do you two finish off this dragon You have that uh, ranged ice slinging one, right? I do. All right, I've got one then. Oh, okay. Uh, Finn with uh, snapping to the side, uh, slipping away from where it's uh, collapsed, retreating one of the tails out from underneath it as it falls. He rotates back to the uh, very front of its face where uh, Alexi is. And with one of the uh, large bone uh, snake heads, uh, or lion heads actually, uh, slams it into like the front of the dragon's mouth, cracking it back open before it can completely seal. And he leans down to the side, almost crouching, uh, with the tail arced around, holding it open. And Alexi has the perfect strike down its throat to cleave its skull in half with ice. Uh, seeing the opportunity, Alexi uh, leans downward, the blade extending out to his side as it begins to coalesce with the uh, crystalline blades, and he begins doing his uh, onslaught of slings down the okay. bridge jacket. Uh, as you begin to channel in, in thrust uh, with these slashes, you see the dragon, its mouth hanging agape. It's struggling there in the moment, severely weakened from its prior wounds and having its brain shaken around. Uh, it still has the clarity of mind for in that moment to start to uh, generate a boiling flame inside of its mouth. And as the slashes start coming in, the first couple are, are are boiled away, but the onslaught is too much as the blades start going in faster than the heat can melt them. The dragon backs up as it's just blow after blow after blow. Finn, with your struggle to keep this thing just on from the sheer might of Alexi's swings as uh, the dragon just gets pummeled before eventually... You feel the massive weight of its bulk kind of press against your your grip there, Finwith, as uh, the dragon's eyes glaze over and it collapses to the ground. Dead, slightly bloodied, and honestly, the fight was not as terrible as you thought it might have been. There's definitely a moment where he paces back and forth, just making sure, still a little hopped up from the adrenaline of finally fighting this apex predator. And then when it dies, uh, perks his head and starts looking it over for a trophy. Once he determines everybody's fine. Not that that takes more than a cursory glance. Kind of all. Finmuth is looking for his trophy. I'm going to say probably warp through the cave, see if there's anything in the cave of interest. Okay. What about Sebastian? Um. 
Sebastian's going to uh, m- like move towards Alexi, um, just kind of saying like, a, "Keep your sense up." I don't know if the other dragon could sense this. <laughs> don't worry. I will be sure to keep an eye on. As uh, he's saying this, he is keeping an eye on this dragon's energy and just kind of watching it fade. Yeah. As you do so, uh, you definitely sense something is approaching, but it's very far off. Hmm. There is something making its way here, but it is pretty far away at this point. I wonder if it would be... Might be able to lay an ambush, but these things are smart. Might not fall for it. Could be a coincidence, could be what I fear. It might know what we've done and be coming for us. As you look around the cave, Anastasia, you don't really see much. The cave is pretty barren besides some desiccated carcasses and a variety of uh, what appeared to be like the dragon literally clawing at the stone enough to make a, 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 a kind of bed of rubble and not silt but dirt I guess it, this dragon is able to pulverize stone to the point of softening it. Okay. Seeing there's nothing, he's just going to quickly head back to the group. And fortunately for you, Finwith, besides like some bits of its uh, maw and its chest a little bit and its tail, the dragon's uh, in pretty remarkable shape. I have a sonic weapon. I will blast things off of it if necessary. <laughs> More saying that you have your pick of trophies without worrying about damages. Yeah. Um, he'll probably uh, get some help through uh, Sebastian's earth, uh, ground control. To kind of like make pillars to like lift it up slightly onto its side, and he is going to go for uh, a scale over its chest near its heart. Okay. Takes a bit of effort from Sebastian, but he makes those pillars for you. Also, it says you're making your way back from everyone, something does catch your eye. Something that seems gem-like. You come over and you see a large, hand-sized gemstone. It's been cut, roughly so, and it seems odd. It doesn't belong here. You know that, at least. Does it seem giving off any kind of heat or cold or anything like that? Nope. Picks it up. Carries it back with him. As uh, Anastasia is carrying it back with him, Alexi, you notice with your glasses, a faint glow emanating from inside of this gemstone. Hmm. Uh, what is that that you got there? I have no idea, but it obviously doesn't fit in this cave. He just passes it over to him. Hmm. 
seems to adjust his uh, glasses. Well, it looks like some kind of magic's in there. Hmm. It appears to be magical, I guess. I can't say that I know anything about it, though. Seems to hand it back. Well, good thing we know someone in Rosencrantz who might be able to help. And, and I gotta say, this gemstone is like the size of a pineapple. <laughs> it's a pretty good <laughs> size rock. That's a lot bigger. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking a hold in hand, hand size. But it's like a pineapple. It's a pretty big stone. Anasase and, and Alexa are both strong enough to, like, heft it with little, little issue. Guess I'll have to take some time and figure out what it is. Yeah, maybe Finnwood knows. The most owlish of blinks. <laughs> Don't look he at points. that though. Curious he points. <laughs> he points to the walking stick, stick as well. Or the um, the that really the depends axe. on how far out that dragon is. Fair. Oh no, he didn't mean now. He meant later. But he'll still hand it to you to look over. It's pretty. Uh, in in the actual light of the cave, you see this large stone. It's got a nice deep purple hue to it. Uh, I'll take it towards the uh, cave opening and like hold it up towards the uh, light. Okay. You do so. It's semi-opaque. Or it's mostly opaque with, you know, some translucence around the edges. It's a very nice, like, deep purple. And as you're all making your way towards the edge of the cave, Alexa, you notice that thing that was, like, really far away before, it's a lot closer now. Hmm. It's moving at a super human speed. Oh, okay. Fair it's away. <laughs> Gemstone. Alexa's like, it is indeed the dragon that is making its way here. It is much faster than anything else. Um, can you make, like, a, a spot to hide on this side of the cave, and the other two can go down there? That way it can't just back out and leave. We can just open it up and, uh, come out once it's down there. I could do that. Uh, it's approaching from above. Hmm. Like, well, not that's straight so up, but from a Oh, shit, we need to tell angle. the other two. We need to tell the other two what's going on. Yep. Well, let's go and get him in the back of the cave now. Yeah. And I forgot, there's actually three because uh, Golan is with y'all as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all three of them in the cave. That's fair. <laughs> uh, yeah, Anastasia, if you want to fucking like, shadow teleport behind them and tell them what's up. Yeah, he will. <laughs> it's like, get in the cave now. The other dragon's on its way. Uh, when you go out, uh, roll for me a search. Fair. That's true. I'm going up against the camouflage masters that is an 89 okay as you 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 go and you look about you don't see them at first before uh hey, who over here as you see uh Mimir is crouched in like a little uh snow covering and you would not have noticed him if he didn't call out for you as the white pelt that he wears uh making for excellent camouflage And as you come up, it seems like he already knows kind of what's going on. He's just like, uh, it called its mate, yeah? I believe so. Where do you want us to go? It might be safer in the cave. Because it's coming from above. Mm. 
me nods and uh, Ursula and and Golan, who's still kind of pretty injured, get up and begin making their way up towards the cave. Just as they're about getting there, you all can see off in the distance a small speck that's rapidly approaching. Uh, while Anastasia is getting them, uh, Sebastian will, while readying ground control, would like to analyze the situation, analyze everything he's encountered with these dragons. Uh, with his really good insight, uh, he's seen like the process that they think through probably can read them a bit like he can read many other people uh, yeah. Sebastian would like to try and outsmart a dragon alright go ahead and roll tactics trap. Two hundred eighty-nine. Okay. So, as you're kind of uh, thinking it over, you know the dragon is coming urgently because it heard like the death cry of its companion. It's going to be cautious, and unless you give it a reason it probably won't approach the cave uh directly can finlith use the scale to, to oh mimic a roar i was literally gonna ask you if you could do that you can try because if he can up his size and mock its roar he'll do that and make it just sound like more desperate. <laughs> Grim. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. You can try. Can try. We'll try. I I like the the dichotomy of this because this morning when I was driving back home, I literally finished a book where the ending was no, we can't do these dishonorable tactics against a dragon. It's not honorable for the beast that it is. Then he look fucking look at us. <laughs> Absolutely dunking on two dragons. All's fair in the hunt. <laughs> I'm curious what his image is for this one because I think this is the first time he's used the scale. Just got it. Oh, he just yeah, got it. True. Yeah. No, there's also the scale that Ishtar gave as well. So. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, he yeah, didn't use that. Yeah. She's also not like hashtag a real real dragon. She's just a no. little dragon. Yeah, she, yeah, she didn't know. Uh, the scale itself gives you access to, excuse me, sorry, uh, it's scales, which go up to nine armor and everything but energy, which it has eight. Jesus. They're, uh, they're a tanky, I'll tell you. Uh, and it gives you access to its breath weapon, which for this one would give you a 10 meter, 10 meter radius, 500 foot cone. Jesus. Hey, can you typey typey the stats? Uh, we're not going to need it. It's not going to be relevant for the game. I mean later so I can just add it to his bestiary to have. Sure, sure. All right. Well, I'll have to look at the. Uh... Remind and me later. Going, yeah. I'll look at at what what the actual stats would be for it. Anyway, yeah. No, he's gonna go tanky, uh, fire, fire breath, and uh, fuck his vocal cords all the way up. So what's it look like? Uh, 
Uh, when Finwith shifts, it seems to be caught somewhere between the way he grows as the Kongsbjorn form, but warped upwards as if he's being pulled apart like he is with the centipede. Just too much torso and shoulder to the point he actually seems to like have to like crack his arms around to give more support for his weight. Able to stand on two legs but is increasingly weighed down as this armor begins to grow. Um, a heavy like rut of scales um, across his skin but from his sternum first rises a spike and then curls to either side mimicking the horns of a dragon rather on his head instead across his uh, chest uh, curling over either shoulder the color models his skin some as even what isn't covered by the heavier scales takes on a more like snake skin like softer pattern His eyes go uh, slitted, and his jaw uh, widens, cracks forward. Uh, his face caught just slightly on the edge of like those uh, werewolves that don't have the full wolf snout. This half-conceived thing. Uh, and then from where his hair meets his uh, skin, the same scales emerge, kind of blending in with the red hair that he already has. When he breathes out, there is a hot rush of air, a few flickers of flame that curl away into smoke, before another harder jut of fire as he acclimates to the ability. And then with this deep rumbling breath, pulls in the air and lets out an agonizing roar. Okay, slightly before this, the roar. Uh, obviously, if y'all are doing this out in the open, it's uh, probably probably no, not going to work. <laughs> so like, what's, what's this method? Are you guys going like deep into the cave? How are you uh, obscuring slash luring this dragon in? Uh, I uh, had a little bit of an idea for that. And Os can also shadow teleport around so he can get behind it. Uh, yeah. So Not in midair. He needs shadows. No, I mean, like, if we can draw it into the cave. Okay, true. So um, what Sebastian would like to do is change the look of the cave a little bit, adding little hiding spots for people. Uh, parts in the back that are a bit more like secure, like stay there, hide, um, but make it so they can obscure. But you know, going through the cave, have a uh, uh, fin with be next to the dragon we just killed, as if it's uh, and you know give a roar like you're fighting uh, and needs aid. But basically, trying to get it inside and to the point where it can like turn that corner, see the dead dragon immediately, like. We can follow up with uh you're inside the cave now we'll like wombo combo you to death can you also throw around rocks while you're making the uh small pockets enough to make it sound like there's still a fight happening oh we could essentially just making it giving everyone like hiding spots in place uh and trying to make it seem like there's a desperate struggle going on inside the cave that it needs to join in to save its uh its mate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay well, then from you, I will need, I guess, your preference in persuasion, disguise, or tactics. No. <laughs> uh, composure. No. Those are my skills. Well, clearly, I'm doing the one persuading, and you can just help me. Uh, can I do that? No. Psychic oh. tests. You're you're attempting to to. There's no deception in this game, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't have a good skill to to equate this to. So I don't have a persuasion. Yeah. Have you have to? 
I mean, if you need rocks thrown around, Anastasi could do it. He does have persuasion. <laughs> Has a fucking buster blade combined with and with like <laughs> roaring and making. Yeah, can we noises. use that instead? I'll just get everything set up. Do you want to like make the sound of a commotion? Uh, you're you're setting up the rocks and uh, Anastasia, you're smashing them. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Anasase, go ahead and roll your persuasion. You're, you're gonna have to head this affair because they're just like, <laughs> you just see a bunch of idiots in a cave throwing rocks around, going, oh, oh, smashing rocks or whatever, and uh, it it doesn't really seem convincing to you. So roll persuasion to help everyone out. I put persuasion points in for nothing. You you got a different role in this play, unfortunately. I have to scream, and I have a dragon mouth. <laughs> Slight pinch at the bridge of his nose, like, ah, here we go again. Would this count as helping, Anastasia? What I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, we'll say we'll plus 10 for that. So 163. All right, so Anastasia is... Uh, Anastasia, with his big weapon, takes the role of the dragon, smashing around into stone and everything like that, and directs you all to, you know, make attacks around him, but at him, in, in, in you know, as if this is an actual fight. And Anastasia's big ass weapon creates more than a loud enough crashing noise to make it convincing. Reasonable. So as this commotion is going on, uh, Finwith, go ahead and make your best persuasion and or disguise. Yes! Yes! Does being a For dragon just get a moment, I get to pretend to be Astrid. Rolling a one after a hundred. Shut your horn. Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have been making leadership rolls. That was a That's fun. ninety-seven to a sixty-one. With a nice. Hundred. Nice. All right. Finwith has always had like a very keen connection to you know wildlife and the such and there's just a brief moment where y'all have to just like look in Finwith's direction because it sounds legitimately like a dying dragon like beast and it's it's so uncannily accurate so as all this is going on Alexi you 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 can sense the creatures getting closer and closer before it stops. And as you all continue for like almost a full minute, whatever it, the dragon you assume does not approach. thinks it's enough of a losing fight might not approach can always can't it where uh, the dragon wins and just make some pain fucking <laughs> whimpering after success we could try last ditch if not we just yeah. hunt it down to its den later yeah exactly alright oh, stops making noise yeah, so does Sebastian. Alright. Uh, and his his uh attempt at this is the final like lure in will uh attempt for a more like vicious kind of like victorious roar that then just kind of like peters out as if uh overextending. Okay. We'll use your prior persuasion before. You, again, you make the sound. You, you, it, it's very convincing. 
and uh, a few moments go by and it's still not approaching. It does not seem to want to approach. Seems like it. How close is it? Unfortunately, Alexei can't tell exactly. He knows its general direction. And from its immensity, can judge it's close by. But unfortunately, the ability doesn't tell you direct, exact directions or distances. Um, pointing at the uh, pillars and not want to make too much noise just in case it can hear them speaking. Uh, we'll kind of like gesture for Sebastian to like shift the ground underneath as if the dragon was moving and settling that down. He does so. As best as he can. Not a slump of weight. After moments, still nothing. That's all he's got. Guess we're waiting it out. Yeah, I think just wait. Might have to come out at its own den, or maybe it'll actually come in. Uh, in the meantime, like maybe a few more pain to beast noises, but like you might just want to wait for a bit. Um, predator wise does not make any more pain noises after the initial cutoff, like uh, more victorious growl. Instead, just has a, a deeper bellowing breath, which honestly he isn't having to try to do anyway. Okay, you get that, you know, that standard like dragon breathing noise you hear in like media all the time, you know, the, uh, the sri- slightly growly, purry kind of noise. The gator cranked up to 11. Yeah. And, uh,. After about five minutes or so, Alexi, you sense it begin to move and it begins flying over and further north, which is the opposite direction it came from. And it just begins flying north. Not as hurriedly as a pace as it did before. Y'all wait around. It's doing the dragon equivalent of like stomping like quieter and quieter away from the front of a door. Trying to trick us? No. It's legitimately flying just north. Uh, Y'all wait around a bit. Alexi kind of sensing out for it. And... Even waiting till like nightfall, the thing, whatever it is, is just flying away north. Unfortunately for you all, dragons are incredibly smart. Uh, fun fact dragons actually have a memorized skill. Huh. It, it knew its, its companion's voice. And while your sounds were convincing, it was not in its voice, unfortunately. Alas. Dragons also have an intelligence of 10. Jesus. Yeah, sounds about right. It would have lured anything else. True. Literally, yeah. If legitimately, I was looking at it sets and like, legitimately, this thing has a memorize. It, it not only not only is it smart enough to kind of figure it out, it also probably just has a good ear for like the sounds of its mate or you know whatever, especially for something that it's uh, spent a significant amount of time with. So yeah, unfortunately, it made its memorized check, which was not hard for it, and despite your convincing performance, you know. It, it just it was wasn't in its voice. Really sucky to have to listen to. It was infuriating. 
like in in the dra red dragon set, which is the dragon you guys fought before, mm -hmm. coincidentally, it knew that if y'all have the liberties to be making a ruckus and and calling out in its maid's voice, you probably dealt with it. It didn't have any hopes of saving its companion at that point, and. Uh, it wanted with all of its might to go in on you all and fight, but knowing that it and its mate were in, you know, closest proximity to strength to each other, and y'all had the the energy to mess around and make sounds like that after the fact, you guys weren't hurting after that fight, or at least weren't concerned about fighting a second dragon in the same day. It knew y'all were bad news. Hmm. Well, at least it has uh, how many reasons now to not come back? Oh, yeah. Uh, it does raise the question, what's north of here? <laughs> Who I mean, knows? If it just keeps fucking off across the sea, then it's definitely somebody else's problem. And to I be fair, it's heading else's. it's heading northeast up through the peak of the world. And it's gotten to the point now where Alexia, like, you could, it could be halfway across Gaia and you wouldn't know. The, the energy reading is just so distant. Hmm. Well, we got it out of Hoffman. <laughs> and gotta kill the dragon. And now Finn, we can turn into a fucked up half dragon. We're gonna need a bigger cart. <laughs> Gotta get this to the black. Yeah, we're gonna have to toss all the shit in that fucking cart. Yeah. We're taking back as much shit as we can. Gonna use, uh, Bolin to find out, like, what the best pieces are. So it's a dragon, so I imagine the answer is, uh, anything. So, um. Alexi continues sensing for a bit. And just like. It seems to not be going to where. It came from. It seems to be going towards the northeast. Somewhere. There's a low little rumble of dissatisfaction from uh, Finwin. Before to save the rest of his uh, Leon begins to crack and shift back shedding scales. And does the like uh, deer thing where they shed their antlers and just like shakes hard enough getting scales off that the horns actually just funk off before they begin to just disappear. Withering away into smoke. Which direction are they heading into, Alexi? Uh, to the northeast of us. My geography could be off based on where we are. But didn't the blacksmith and Hiddle's theme say that there was a volcano in that direction? Uh, maybe. Uh, not quite. So if y'all look at the map here, uh, you guys found the dragon's, like, lair somewhere up, like, in this... Uh, it's not working. One second. In this general area ah uh, so that would be to the south oh, okay and it's flying fly. northeast from your location up in like a up in like a this way direction okay his statement stands true Anastasia does not have the geography of this place memorized <laughs> I mean that's fair yeah he did preface with that So, not quite the victory you all are looking for, but victory nonetheless. You did say solve Hoffman's sculling and dragon problem. True. Perfect. This area will not have any more dragons. Totally <laughs> no more dragons. Probably rush get lands. <laughs> <laughs> 
is our turf dragon. So, that being the case, uh, y'all take the time. You got a cave here. It's already getting later. It's best that you just camp out here. Uh, looking the dragon over there. <laughs> yeah, you ask Golan and he's just like... There's not much you can't do with a dragon as far as its parts are concerned. Even its blood can be used in powerful artifacts. Though all of which require the hands of a truly expert uh, crafter. So Ishtar's sword? Ishtar, in a sense, she gains it through the sword. I, I don't know who Ishtar is, but I'm assuming they are proficient craftsmen. There is also that uh, up and coming blacksmith that we met. Good with kind of like gives a little bit of a side look, but like just smiles. Alexi is definitely smiling. So smart. This poor boy, we've traumatized him so much. First, all the magic weapons, and now we just drop dragon parts in front of him and go make something. All right, well, whatever Finwitz carry weight, he adds that on. Anastasia does as well. Yeah. And they uh, go Mimir. Pile back a bunch of shit. We're going to have the coolest equipment. Mimir comes up and he's just like, hmm, yes, I see. I, uh. I probably could work something around like this and expertly he begins to uh what is it I guess harvest well yeah he has a, a proficient skill enough to, to to get dragon parts easily and and despite its hard scales he knows how to lift the scales and cut around he's it's almost like he's done something like this before though in question he's like not dragons no but uh it wouldn't be my first skilled beast as he like dissevers a tendon and suddenly the arm dragon's arm comes off and he lays it to the side then with his watching rapidly yeah you can see the way his hands move and the way he like places the blade between the dragon scales and cuts around he is awe-inspiring in his uh carving skills it's like you pick up a few things here and there <laughs> sebastian's Let's like see. genuinely like watching him do this I intrigued as someone who's also trained in uh, this sort of work Unfortunately, the technique doesn't look like it'd work on a living dragon, so yeah. it's not like this ability to get past its scales is something in practicality useful. But post the fact, yeah, he's trying. He's pretty trained in survival, so, so watching yeah. someone do this really well to a creature he's just now discovered existed. Yeah, Mamir has a two twenty survival. I have a one fifteen. So fucking like impressive. Yeah, he's uh he's he's very he's very weathered and skilled and has all kinds of survival tactics. For being a level eight character, not bad. Not bad at all. How's Ursula doing? She is fine. She's softened up so much, she's not as you know tight and, and upright as she was when y'all first started journeying out and after seeing your skill she has no you know she has no recourse but then to offer you all the respect you deserve as now official dragon hunters there is a slight like somberness to her eyes knowing that on this entire adventure she was not very helpful and mind you she's like a level seven character she's a she's a character that most other places in the world would be top of the top champion of tournaments all the other kind of stuff 
and yet you all made her feel infantilized with your ability and skill. It's all right. It's just anima power creeps. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Go through Moth. It helps a lot. Yeah, just don't worry. We know some locations. If you survive, yeah. Mama Celsia goes over to Fenwith. Can I help the gemstone? Fenwith. Twenty. Ah, maybe they stepped away for a second. Probably. Or it could be one of those weird situations where they're in the call, but internet has fallen to the wayside. I'm back. Oh, oh welcome back. Hey, you can get the stone. He takes it, takes it over to Ursula and Golan. Don't suppose you, either of you would know what this is. He just sits down after he hands it to him. I mean, Ursula looks at it and she's like, it's uh, some kind of rock. Golan, Golan on the other hand looks at it and... Again, he's still really injured. You guys have been traveling for about like a week or so, but he's got normal, like normal person regeneration. He gets like 10 HP a day if he's resting and you all have been traveling. It's not been a very fun trip for him. But he looks it over. Mm, he, he, he inspects it closely. He's like... Well, I'm not as proficient as my brother in such things. I, uh, I can definitely tell there's something to this. It's, uh, strange, but it looks like some kind of communication artifacts one would speak through, but I don't know why one would pick a medium of this size and quality. It seems wasteful. No. Okay. Thank you. I'll let you get back to resting. That's fine. So Southerners talking to dragons or horns to dragons? Mm -hmm. It might be connected to the horns. Dragon to dragon? I mean, if a dragon was going to enchant something, it'd be big. That's still pretty tall, you know. Dragon version of a sending stone, except it's a uh, pineapple sized, incredibly stupidly expensive gemstone. <laughs> Makes good dragon it. logic. Heads back, passes the stone back to Finleth, and passes what Golan said onto everyone. It was probably just because it was big enough for it to listen to. Shrugs. Well, I guess we'll never know what it's connected to. Oh, yeah. Going like hobbles over to Alan. It's like, I know we've been busy. <laughs> Lately, and I know I've voiced my concerns before, but uh, was my brother doing anything of importance last you spoke to him? He was uh, trying at the very least to get the flowing castle back to recharge, I believe. Um. But if you mean before that, I believe he was uh, training somebody. No, no, no. I'm I'm well aware of what he was doing there. 
I just, I haven't been able to get a hold of him. Well, my body's in not the best of conditions. My magics have been returning to me, and I've tried multiple times, and I've, there's been no response, and I, I don't know why. Hmm. He has a look of concern. Almost piteously so, as, you know, the once larger, more jo jolly individual you met way back when in a... In a... Oh my goodness. It's been too long. Skogenjäger. Yeah. Uh, he is now, you know, a very gaunt and, and weathered individual losing an unhealthy amount of weight and not in the best, you know, health at the moment. Uh, he kind of saying this, uh, Alexei goes, ah, no need to worry. He is probably just busy. We could definitely go and check up on him. But if anything, he might still be browsing the, uh, uh, what did we call them? Archives in the uh, castle itself. Maybe saying, it's just interfering, interfering with your magic or something. Saying this much, Alexi, you try to reach your senses out. Unfortunately, again, anima rolls hundreds of miles. I have no idea how, what that means. How many hundreds? I guess anything between two and nine hundred, because otherwise it'd be <laughs> thousands. Fair. I, I have no idea. I love this game, but my god, it makes some things really hard. If they want, the, if, if they want me to just hand wave away the distance, just tell me unlimited or something. Jesus. <laughs> Which they do in some areas. Well, they do is like, oh, yeah, when you have like 400 or something, they're like, oh, yeah, infinity. <laughs> but like they they always have in so many places, they have these vague places in certain in certain areas where they're just like standard number, standard number, vague, 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 big number. It could be anything. Infinity. <laughs> it's like. uh uh, anyway. Uh, let me pull up the map, actually. I just realized in the map, Kiki, that capital and Metropolis are the same symbols. Don't, don't, don't look at it too hard. Well, I guess we're going to go check on him now. Hey, gotta... After we drop all this stuff off. I need a, I need that temple. Or, I mean, I, I need him. But definitely not just the temple. Grim. I mean, in all fairness, we all want the temple. Oh, yeah. I, I need to... I need to use it in the future. I don't know. Don't know if Alexia has gotten over how unnatural it is. Don't worry, little one. We'll go check on him. Huh. And just now, I, I may have realized it before and just completely ignored it. They misspelled peak. Oh, yeah, we've mentioned that a few times. Over our, the course of just, like, That's having them. Bloody it's just a play on words. It's made, yeah, it's intentional. That's just how peak is spelled in the animal world. 
The wings are just of a giant peacock that lives up here. Yeah, unfortunately, on the map, for you all anyway, uh, from your current location, he could be out of your range. Sure. Y'all are, are somewhere in the range of like 800, 900, maybe even a thousand miles away. Oh no, Arthur might be out of my range. He more than likely is. <laughs> yeah. So, you can't even verify at this moment. But regardless, y'all take the time. Y you loot up on all kinds of uh, dragon bits. And begin on the next day making your trip back down. You decide to go to Molenheim as there is, uh, you know, you need to get some more provisions for your trip back. It's going to be another near month journey before you get back to uh, Hiddleslime. Oh, it's going to be more than that, actually. It's going to be like two months again, something like that. Because it's like, uh, it's like 600 miles or something like that. And you need to take winding mountain paths, so... Yeah, that's going to take you almost a, two, a month and a half. So you go to Molenheim. You get provisions. You look around. Molenheim's a very uh, interesting settlement. Uh, these people didn't even realize that there was a dragon north of them. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Uh, it's a pretty massive uh, city, and there's all kinds of small little villages out and around in the nearby valleys and such. Uh, it was built upon a great stone platform at the edge of the vast abyss, with the mountain's wall on one side and the dark precipice on the other. Walnhein is a city like no other in the world. Moreover, the only way to reach it is over the enormous bridge of Balgmund. Half a mile long, which connects to a nearby mountain, bridging the large gap that separates them. The area is known for the common, uh, to commonly have blizzards. Molenheim keeps from being buried in the snow, thanks to the mountain that partially covers it. The city itself stands out in comparison to the northern cities because its buildings seem much more monumental than what is expected of Nordic art architecture. Although it still tends to lean towards the characteristic dark gray hues of the kingdom, Molnheim is replete with detailed multi-story buildings with heights that are occasionally connected to each other via elaborated bridges. It's a big fancy stone place, and I actually have... Nope, that's not a picture of it. Never mind. Looks similar to it, but I guess it's not. Anywho. So, as you all begin making your way back, it's uh, getting a little bit warmer. You're hitting the summer months, which is still 
honestly at around like zero degrees Fahrenheit up in the peak of the world. It's better than negative 20. It's true. Poor Anastasia's gonna get back home after all of this mountain air and like, man, it's hot here. Yeah, now you know why y'all went to, like, the slightly temperate location of, uh, of, uh, where the tournament was held and all the Nordic people were like, man, it's fucking hot here. <laughs> the place sucked. Well, Katana was, like, freezing his nips off. <laughs> that poor mug. <laughs> it will never be the same. Barjan is like, what the fuck? Who Someone cut a knife into this mug? Assholes. He'll never know. He'll never know. Or want to know, honestly. Yeah, it's better not, honestly. Thinking this. <laughs> Just the concept that someone could do that is ridiculous enough. But, uh, yeah, so the trek is a little bit better than when you first initially made your trip out there. Sebastian has another episode. Of course. But unless any of y'all try to fuck with things, uh, Horcux goes about his business and Return Sebastian's body by morning. Pops the eardrums and eye eyeballs again. <laughs> yep. Still, Sebastian just thinking, like, this is really unnecessary, but alright. <laughs> I mean, you all killed him. Yeah. He but... literally has the least reason to trust you all in the world. Literally could not have done him dirtier. I didn't kill him. He's in my brain. He knows also he would know how Sebastian thinks. Sebastian, Sebastian thinks. I should give a shit. If yeah, you I mean, didn't want to be killed, you should have been weak enough to be killed. Yeah. I mean he's openly said, like, I don't care what you do and I'm transformed, just don't like these are the only people you can't touch. I don't care what else you do. And just be fair, because just because y'all share a headspace doesn't mean you see each other's thoughts. Eh, true. You don't know his thoughts. Eh, that's fair. You just beam like thoughts at him. Shouts into the void of your mind. But by the time you've made like well past the halfway point. Alexi still just can't seem to sense Olin. Worrying. A definite concerned grimace goes across his face. Golan has also been worried, looking much better by this point in the journey. He's pretty much back to full health, and he's doing his best. He can't really put on weight on trail rations. So, uh, you know, still somewhat gaunt. Honestly, now that he's this weight, he, he and his brother look a lot more similar than you would have initially thought. <laughs> Only rather than dark hair, he has the reddish hair. But you get to Hazelsheim, and uh, you go and you report in. The king is very enthusiastic about your your triumph. He does ask for you know a a prize. For for the the defeat and and Mimir hands him over like a small taloned claw that he, he took off the dragon. Unaware of the like cart 
outside that's just piled high with shit. All their equipment tossed aside, just even more dragon pieces. <laughs> I mean, the king just wants something to show off, like, look to what my warriors did, see this is the dragon's claw. You know, typical lord stuff. <laughs> Regardless, uh, for those in the castle who know and everything like that, and for those who see your wagon full of, you know, or your, your, your packs of dragon bits, uh, the city erupts in a, a series of cheers and celebrations as for the first time in... You know, for most people, the history of Hiddlestein, dragon slayers have returned from the hunt, and of course, it's the Frost Collier who bring in this mighty prize. Many people look at uh, you all with admiration, children gawking. It's uh, it's it's quite the sight as you look around and you see all kinds of people just excited for you to be here and and knowing of your deeds seeing you know it's really hard to hide dragon scales if you decided to carry your weight's worth and i'm sure sebastian's probably floating or something an absurd oh, yeah. number he just has a giant ball of dragon blood that's been frozen over time now <laughs> horrifying <laughs> Some mage is gonna shit themselves, though. Just gotta get a nice enchanter. <laughs> um, Alexi saying, like, all the cheers and admiration can't help but think that, um... All of the frost collier that he had lost along the way, that maybe, uh, can take some solace in this victory. Looking out into the crowd, you see possibly a familiar face, but that can't be. You rub your eyes and you look again and no one is there. But you feel like up there somewhere. You're being smiled upon by the Frost Collier that uh, died with you in that ba or died next to you in that battle. The other Frost Collier, unfortunately, are not as happy. If y'all remember, the whole initial goal was for y'all to get information on the dragon, come back, and organize a big fight with all the Frost Collier and ballistas and everything. And y'all just beast mode it up in the mountains yourselves without everyone there. Yeah, it was just so easy. Like, we figured we didn't want to waste everybody's time. You wouldn't have got it hidden. <laughs> they just buffed their nails on their hides. Like, me. Eh. Oh. Oh no. Can you hear it? Oh dear, I heard that. Uh oh. Alex is gonna start the giggle. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Jesus. Thanks, Evan. <laughs> Even Ray, who, you know, was the asshole y'all met before can do nothing but grumble to himself as as much as he wanted to be a part of it he again must give you all credit for slaying a dragon and even if even if he was to go to the limit and say oh it must have been mamir he did everything like even that seems too unreasonable by his standard <laughs> Y'all must have at least played a part, but he does, at least to himself, give Mimir most the credit for your guys' kill. And then they happen to walk by the, like, training area, because they keep hearing a bunch of rumbling and stuff, and it's just Alexi facing off against, uh, half-dragon Finwith. <laughs> and they just quietly leave. 
uh, tales are told, Mimir is more than happy to share your all your exploits with everyone, keeping some details on the down low. Ah, uh, the werewolf. That's fair. <laughs> he doesn't want anyone to know that they all have a werewolf with you. Uh -huh. That's also how we dealt with the schooling. <laughs> a um. magic werewolf, no less. <laughs> I'm delighted by the fact that he's like, oh yeah, fucking werewolf Sebastian, who can float around and shit. It's a magic werewolf. Ignoring the vampire and the magic shapeshifter that actually could be a werewolf. Well, he also kind of keeps to himself as well. The Anasazi is a Vitella. Respectable. Yeah. Though he does go to mention that Finwith is a uh, a sculling, but you know, representing the might of their culture and people and utilizing it too. He, he paints the sculling in the best light he can. While still, like, not hiding the fact that the sculling were, you know, reduced down to a more pitiable state. And it was one eventual, like, struggle for leadership before they uh, eventually fl uh, fled the lands. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, any great people can be felled by poor leadership. Sure. That's all it is. That's all it's ever been. Stairs of the Mountain Peaks. More flashbacks. And, you know... Even Ursula, who some of the more skeptical uh, Frost Collier kind of drill her for questions. And every time she just sighs and it's like, nope, the old man's telling the truth. They are exactly as they said they were. And they, uh, you know. Y'all gain a fair amount of respect amongst the Frost Collier, but grudgingly in some cases. And maybe earning a bit of a reputation as glory seekers. Oof. Choosing to face off against a dragon by themselves instead of getting the help of the other Frost Collier. Well, I mean, they can. No, we just had the two that mattered. They can come up and say something when they kill a dragon. Alexi is a lot more humble about it. As is the Frost Collier way. I imagine there's a few interactions with a Frost Collier where someone will like come up to Sebastian and be like, uh, oh, you killed a dragon. He'll explain, like, he'll just explain what happened accidentally bragging. But he's just yeah. relaying the facts and he'll mention that it was incredibly easy. It wasn't really a struggle. Alex, why? I, he, he's just telling people what happened. To be fair, Sebastian's... Mimir doesn't tell that everyone that Sebastian's like a magic werewolf creature. Just an excellent tactician that always seems to know what plays to make and is more than capable of supporting his allies using ingenuity and... Uh, you know, using ingenuity in surprising ways. So you're not really quite given the same warrior's treatment. You're given, like, if everyone else in the party has to, like, get, like, an S ranking by default, everyone gives you a solid B. Good. Means less people are going to bother him, so he's not against it. So. so sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, if too many people crowded on us, he just does the shadow warping just to get away from people. <laughs> well, Frost Collier don't. Uh, like I said, they, they ask questions to their fellow comrades, and even some of them will come up to Alexi and be like, So, you fought dragon and lived. That's. That's honestly. 
surprising considering your lack of uh, accomplishments amongst Roskali. Yeah, but if Mamiwa, he said his rights, then obviously we were all just unaware of your prestigious talents. Your family would be proud. He smiles and gives the nod. It's like, my only regret is that I didn't get to uh, see the other member's skills in combat. <laughs> then you should have come and gotten us. <laughs> Maybe. We can try and find a second dragon. Oh, if it's come back, we just won't tell you a lot. We'll get it ourselves. <laughs> Speaking with Tor. Fair. Oh, which one was Tor again? I have notes on. It's not like it's been any time at all. Yeah, it's not like it's been four months or five months or six months. Who knows anymore? <laughs> time is fake. Time is not real. And, uh, no, actually, that's not true. Time is very real. I've forgotten a lot of shit. I'm not going to lie. I remember all the main story beats. I had to check my notes a few times. If y'all watch the stream, you'll <laughs> have like, what was their name again? I saw your, you opened the notes once or twice. <laughs> Does not bode well for her, uh, Tor. As I have similar to Ursula as his description. They're just both really serious. Uh, let's see here. Ah, uh, yes. So you all uh, bring your, well, I guess on Alexi's behest, unless y'all think it's a bad idea. Bring your dragon bits to Valdi, the. Uh, Blacksmith You're gonna here in Hidden Sign. You should only bring him some. Just some, yeah. Stuff to practice on, you know? It's only like the best material he'll touch ever, probably. Well, uh, when you come back to him, he, he is very excited. First, he's like, I heard you also the dragon, but I have some more exciting news than that. And he, he looks to Anasasa and is like, I, I think I might be able to work on your weapon, if you would allow me to. Oh. Sure, just takes off the weapon, hands it over. <laughs> Gently, so it doesn't fall on him. <laughs> I love the thought that Anastasia forgets how heavy the sword is. They probably do, I mean. It's easy for him, he forgets. The only person he knows it won't work on is Sebastian, that's because Sebastian can't lift weights. And also, like, you have the luxury of Sebastian that he won't even, like, reach for it out of politeness. He'll just say no. Uh, he looks and he's like, I couldn't find anything that my grandfather left over from his days as blacksmithing, but I could find something. I have this old knife that he made for me when I was very young. My first hunting knife, and it didn't occur to me, but maybe he used some of the techniques on it, and I've been looking it over and looking at the metal and even breaking it down and, and looking at it down to its finest bits and I've been practicing and I think I might be able to work on something and uh, he's like hey you have to give me some time I'm not necessarily the best at this but uh, you know if you would he chuckles take all the time you need Good. Uh, and then you show him the dragon scales and he's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if I'm ready for that. Uh, he like comes over with a pair of like the pliers, or not the pliers, but the, uh, the cutters for like metal. And he like tries it on the scale and he just can't even cut into it. <laughs> I was like, mm, no, I'm sorry, friends. Do you at least want one for your own practice for when you do feel you're ready? What? You, you would give me something so valuable as that? Each piece would have to be at least hundreds of gold. Again. Fitness just shakes his head as if they need gold. 
We have plenty of them ourselves. It's like literally y'all are like, hey, uh, here's my old like Lamborghini that I don't use. <laughs> Anymore. Yeah, I have the new year. Uh, if, if you want to take a look at it, you know, if, if you ever want to, like, restore your own here, take it apart. We don't care. <laughs> Two billion dollar car. Adventuring parties, man. Yeah, no, I'm just, like, there's no way I could really put it into perspective just how absurd it is. No, I mean, the only thing I've seen was a, a Jacob Butts tweet talking about how, like, adventurers will go into a... a, a like a, a shop to uh, ask for like uh, with just fully armed like with incredibly magical weapons and armor mention that they want everything half off because they solved the murder and then when they're asked to leave tip five hundred dollars <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> single-handedly destroying economies wherever we yeah. go literally literally it's like you go to a store and you buy like a, a very small bag of like cheetos or something you know something that's like 69 cents or whatever and you just hand the guy like a 50 dollar bill like keep the change i don't want to break it down and you leave <laughs> that's exactly what happens when you all pay someone a gold for like a ration or a meal or something and if that was in like our world imagine explaining to your man manager at the end of the night when they're counting out your till and making sure everything's even like listen some guy just gave me a thousand dollars told me to keep it what the fuck do i do just split it with the staff and just not talk about it yeah. <laughs> fortunately back in the olden days uh you overpay someone they're like oh cool yoink now this poor kid thinks we're gonna be coming for him because of all the gold stuff we've given him worthwise we've made a lot of investments in you <laughs> Sweats profusely. Put hand on shoulder, Titan's hand. I expect good things from you. <laughs> no a threat or encouragement. Yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, anyway uh, given uh, a few given... days, he works on Anastasia's blade, restoring it to near new condition. The blade is well polished. The weight feels good, and he actually improves the the quality of your weapon by one. Oh shit! Damn. That makes it a quality eleven weapon. <laughs> oh no 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 no! It no. becomes a plus fifteen rather than a plus, plus 10. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. One one degree of quality, plus five. Yeah, that's a lot of bonuses too. <laughs> but now comes a question. Golan still cannot get a hold of Olin. Alexei can't sense him. Well, we we gotta go. We sure. stopped in through here to like you know, talk shop and shit, but we have no reason to stay. We gotta long hike to go find out what the fuck's going on with the flying uh, temple and, and him. Yeah, that's pretty important. Okay. Do we need to stop off in Alexi's hometown to drop off any trophies with his family? Good question. Probably be better than hauling dragon parts to there, right? We're a bunch of freaks of nature, and Sebastian can lift a fucktillion with his brain. And we don't have to haul anything around if we have a flying temple. True. The trip home can wait, I think. Okay. It's faster to just go straight there, too. The only reason we couldn't originally is because he didn't want to get it anywhere near the dragons. True. Also, gotta make sure Geraldine's okay. Yeah, we gotta check out the boy. So, y'all take the fastest route you can imagine to uh, the temper Temple of the Skyward Eye. Trekking through the wilderness down and up valleys. Using wings and shadow teleportation and floating the ones who can't <laughs> do that freaky shit. 
Just speed run it. Invalidate yeah. a few uh, climbing kits along the way. <laughs> yeah, we have to make sure he never uses that. Yeah, you're never using again. that. We're not letting you use it in your epilogue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Devin had that in his uh, note. Write down one of the things. Climb Mount Everest. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Uh, so as you all do, and you, you, you do at the fastest pace that you can manage, uh, you take what probably should have been, like, a three-week journey and cut it down by, like, a week and a half or so. Which is still pretty good, honestly. Being able to, you know, go as the, the crow flies across the mountains is very, very fast. True. And... You find the temple positioned in its prior spot, alleviated of much of the snow as the temple has been in use, you know, in recent times. You all manage to get up onto the main entryway and you begin making your way down the spiral staircase into the temple itself. And as you kind of come inside, everything is on. The faint glow from the lights embedded in the walls illuminates the place, though so much of it is cast in shadow, and you just... It didn't feel as creepy as it does now, but you get no sense of hostility, and... And uh, Alexi doesn't sense anyone inside. And as you all begin going, and looking around you head to the main operation room and you see a foot sticking out behind the center table and as you all come into the room and inspect it's as you might have feared Olin's body is there on the ground, though this was no normal murder. He looks drained of all vital energy and fluids, a husk near mummified on the spot. Golan is overcome and his eyes well up. Is he like, oh, my brother? No, is he like, looks him over and is overcome by a deep sadness. Been with unable to do much else. Uh, cracks and shifts into the lynx totem. Um, to gain access to better senses and is going to try and see if he can pick up any sense okay go ahead and make a search his way through this uh, temple what about everyone else uh on the sussies uh, right Sorry. First on Saucy, what are you doing? He's rushing to the library. Okay, and what was that what was that you said, uh, Finwith? Uh and it was search, right? Not tracking. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it was search or track, I guess. There's no nah, search. There's no uh there's no footprints or anything to track here. Tracking the scent. Sure. Go ahead. It doesn't give you that much extra. What about Sebastian? Hmm. Sebastian looks over, like, all them for a bit. More annoyed that this happened, but uh, we'll see if he can, like, in the surroundings, determine, like, I don't know, piece together the crime scene if he can. Try to see if he can figure out what happened. Sure thing. If 
you want to try to guess the best method that this would have happened, make a tactics or is there an investigate in this game? I don't even know anymore. Search is the closest we've used. Yeah, tactics or search. Yeah, I'll use tactics. dice really like 40 in this game it doesn't seem to be a bad number for you anyway yeah not for tactics at least so finn with as you're you're, you're kind of sniffing around anything to get a sense it can't be called a stench but as you sniff around the air, while you don't detect any particular scent, a strong thought of death enters into your mind. Something that would come across your mind when you smell, you know, a rotted corpse or abundance of blood or anything like that. You just... You can't put your finger on it. The smells you smell are pretty standard fare, you know. You know, the scent of people's shoes, what they tracked in, earthiness mixed in with, you know, whatever uh kind of wax or oil people use to to on their clothing. Does it Even, smell anything like you would have Interacted with while in uh, Rosencrantz began a forest. No, it's not a scent, as I mentioned before, but something. Maybe it's your animal senses tingling. It just smells like death happened here. Even Olin's body really doesn't smell. Sebastian, as you you monitor your tactics, it's worrisome. First of all, getting into the temple of the Skyward Eye is hard. Without superhuman abilities, it would be arduous to climb up to the top part of the temple. Not only that, but from what you knew, though you never really saw much of it in person, Olin was a proficient spellcaster, one that Golan looked up to. A man that was n well known enough and capable enough to train like a, a strong budding new chieftain in Goldar. You expect that he must have had some significant amount of magic power. So it's two possible results. Either he was ambushed by whatever did this to him and killed instantly, or he was so vastly overpowered that he wasn't even capable of stopping or making a fuss. Does it look like there's any evidence of like trying to protect himself or is it just uh it does look his body seemed to like mummify in the moment of death and you see that he looked in pain and he looks like he was reacting his arms kind of held upright but not in any direction he wasn't grabbing at anything or anything like that it's like he got hit and his hands came up instinctively to guard like his face or something uh, though not so clear, and then he died. Worry. Uh, he keeps some of this to himself. It's really clear he's like analyzing over everything, but keeps the results to himself for now. And so say as you're running off into the library, it's as you left it. The archive is 
just that big room full of monoliths as it was before. Alright, he goes up to one of the tables and asks about a creature that does, that mummifies the bodies of its victims. Okay. Uh, as you go and do so, Alexi, what are you doing during all this? Alexi is more sitting there with uh, a grim expression on his face and seems to be paying uh, respect to Golan by sitting there and watching over things while he uh, holds to and uh, grieves over his brother. Okay. Anastasia, you get a variety of results. The, you know, automaton or not automaton, the hologram is naming off a list of creatures, a lot of them being water or fiery based elementals with either sheer control over liquids or you know that have that has a non-burning heat capable of drying out an individual in moments the list seems somewhat sizable and I, if anything that's somewhat concerning <laughs> so many creatures are capable of such a thing Shaking his head, feeling like this won't do anything. He's going to start running around, seeing if any of the rooms look different. Yeah, he probably beats Finn with also doing the same, clearing out the temple just in case. Uh, you enter the garden. And... Yeah, <laughs> you see... Much of the plant life has wilted somewhat not dead per se but much of the plant life here is drained of its vitality <laughs> Finn with immediately like decks past and us uh, towards the, the uh, trees in the back keeping an eye out and, uh, well, and an ear and a nose for anything actually having come here this room just has that same sense. Nothing dead. No no rot, no decay, not even like the smell of like uh like withered plants or anything like that. Like the plants are alive for the most part. And the gasol trees are perfectly fine. To be fair, they're also so hardy. Even if they were in bad health, you probably wouldn't even know if if they were or not. Just for a moment, he'll get enough Zeon together. Just to make sure there's nothing here, and because he's thinking too fast to really think through anything, just checking off marks as he can come up with them. Uh, he will use his Bloodvine Totem and use the Undead Hatred ability, just in case anything of death is here. Uh, funny enough, as you attempt to well as you channel your zeon you find it's harder to channel as much zeon as normal it takes more time uh if anas carries on towards the back to keep an eye still on finn with uh the like link's mane that he has like is completely bristled uh and his like ears are tapered longer and slightly tufted and are like oddly tilted down and back against the skull. What's wrong? His eyes kind of snap around the trees as he uh, gets the Xeon together and uses it. You can see his veins kind of bulge slightly and then begin to like root across underneath the skin until he has more of them. But it doesn't it's not too uh, severe of a change before it stops. And it sees if anything reacts. Well, you have to leak some fluid because it's breaking the vines that prompts the uh, undead to come. 
And yeah, we'll do so. He digs uh, the claws of the lynx into his palm just a bit. Say what? Are you doing okay? I don't remember this one. As uh, you speak, Finno seems completely focused on their task, and as you look around, nothing stirs. Nothing comes from around the trees or bursts forth from the ground. Though, taking on the aspects of this plant, you sense... in some sense that cannot be described on, by normal human terms that this area is filled with death but not the dead he flips his hand back over pulling the uh, claws away from it uh, kind of laps over it for just a moment where he uh, reaches up and like tucks the hand against uh, the cloth of his hides long enough to staunch it and lets the blood vine totally go. Its effects regressing. He still seems incredibly upset and remains on the Link's form itself, but uh, finally actually focuses on you. What? Very concerned looking at us. What's wrong? It's all, it's just all dead, but none of it's dead. Does it feel like that pulse that hit us before? No. Okay. Not the same feeling. Just checks and <laughs> check marks off. Uh, what about the other rooms? We'll check on the way back. Okay. Once you all get back, the conclusions thus far, whatever it is, came in here, dealt with Olin, didn't do anything, didn't take anything. It just left. And whatever presence it brought, it left a lingering amount of it behind. Racking his brain does almost also remember encountering any creature or being that gave off a similar feeling? No. You have no recollections of a being such as this. Even Vitello, which are notorious for blood sucking, aren't capable of just draining someone dry unless they were a hemomancer. But even after, you know, meeting one of the most proficient hemomancers probably in history, you didn't get this sensation from it. Before we make it all the way back, uh, Finwith reaches out and kind of clicks, hooks the claws into a, a joint of the armor to stop you from it. Mm. Just, just in case Golan doesn't like it. He pulls out the uh, walking stick. And he's going to settle in to use it. Kind of check okay. in with you. Make sure you stay. He will. And then focusing on the image of Olin's corpse and the like deluge of deathly sensation uh, in the garden, he is going to try and ask who or what uh, has or like, can do this. Okay. As you do so, you struggle to go into your trance as you normally would. Normally, it's a pretty easy thing. You, you, you 
go through the motions and you just kind of fall into a meditative stance. But this time is more forced. When he feels the resistance, he kind of just stops uh, with a like muffled hiss and just reaches up and hooks the claws into Anasa's armor and hauls him up towards the entrance of the uh, temple to do it out in the open air. Hoping away from the death stench. Uh, it's easier. Alright. You do so. And as you set upon to do this, it does seem somewhat easier. Focusing in, you're brought to that campfire. And the shade before you is in a profile somewhat familiar. It was him, the Midnight King. He thirsts for the life force of those whose vitality goes beyond unnormal mortals. And he is very hungry. And he just leaves you with those ominous words. Then what comes to looking up at us? Repeats it. He sighs, stands, and sets it away. We should. We should go talk of it. We need to finish it if he's hunting. Yes. Places a steady hand on your shoulder. Gives you a nod before I'm walking off with you. Slinks after an us. They descend back into the temple and go back to the control room. You all get back together. You see Alexi vigilantly watching over everything and Sebastian deep in thought. his way over to Sebastian reaching out with a claw lightly hooking onto something like of loose clothing he's just tugging slightly there's a brief bit where he like is startled instinctively kind of moves away yeah he immediately like retracts the claw what's Raven? Too surprising. Uh, Anas said that Olin said he's hungry for uh, people with more vitality than others. Could be why they've taken an interest in us then. hasn't come after us. He at least made the presence known to us. Maybe it's out of fear on their part. Maybe that's how he finds prey. Possibility. But if he came for him, then 
We should go before he can go after other people. Yes, we should. Maybe Alexi should tell Golden. It would be best at it. I have an understanding that explaining how they died might not go well for Golden. Which is all I could provide in this moment. So, he'll nod and pass as much on to Alexi. seems to sense tighter but odds if he sometimes you can tell him when he's ready if <laughs> when he's ready and Alexei will do just that he will allow him to grieve before bringing him further news I see. Well, I I don't know. I I don't think I could be of much use to you on this. It was never really my strong suits to begin with. I don't know how we could stop something like this. Do you know how to control the temple? Let's stop the arm. I could manage, I think. Possibly. I never was great at it, but... It's possible. He thinks for a moment about the uh, true chimera, like, limb regeneration thing, and wondering if you stuck an actual, like, limb to the spot, if it would just take that one or not. And then decides he doesn't want anything to do with the freaky arm or all this weird technology. <laughs> and he would absolutely just crash it or some stupid shit. But he thinks about offering. Olin was a good friend to us, so we will see the quest through that he brought us on board for. We owe him that much for as much as he's done for us. Anastasi stands up, cracks his neck a bit, and knuckles. Guess we gotta go kick a King of Midnight's ass. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Unless that cousin of yours has something uh, for death, like they do mind stuff, yeah, we'll just have to kill him with all. We can do that. We killed Dragon. Looks to Golan. I don't suppose you could reach my family, could you? I've never met them before. It would be difficult. And honestly, would you want to get them anywhere even near involved in this? Personally, no. But, I have been chewed out severely for not going to them when I need help. If you give me some time, maybe I can recompose and figure things out. 
Okay. Looks to Finleth. Who would you want to contact? Laurentif, the Crows, or Radovan? Uh Well, Radovan's the one who knows the uh, southern shamans, right? He does. Those are the ones who made the other thing. Maybe uh, we can trade some of the dragon blood or something and get things to help. I don't know what all he can do. He does have connections to a lot. If you don't want your family involved though, you should definitely not tell them how dangerous he probably is. No, but... Do we truly know what the King of Midnight is? He's obviously capable of this as emotions to the body, but that's not a Vitalo sign. Uh, maybe uh, we could ask the first dog. He's uh, older, right? He might know something. Oh, and um, the creepy thing. The one he, uh, the Lord of Crows. Maybe he will know something that he knows. Or even Ishtar's sword. That thing's supposed to be special. We can ask, and I will ask a um, walking stick. See okay. if anything will help. I can do that to make sure we're not wasting time. Or worrying them, asking them. I'll do that first. While Golden figures things out. He perks up just a little. We are at least also connected by the um, kind of gestures to the eye that is on Finwood's person. Yeah, he kind of like looks down at it. Goes to like pat and then thinks about just like having your vision, just a hand, just whap whap. <laughs> Jesus, not you. <laughs> hey, one way to get their attention. I don't think we communicate through it though. We can let him know. <laughs> uh, no, it just lets him see with I see if he closes his eyes. If he can see outside the mall. Or whenever he goes to the wing. I will figure it out. We can also figure out what the um, fancy rock is supposed to talk to. Nods. Alright. Take some time, waits for Sebastian to step aside before asking for his counsel on who to contact first, since he's the tactical mastermind and he's got a bit more knowledge as to who to contact. Yeah, and well, Golan deals with stuff and then deals with the arm stuff, which I imagine will probably take a couple days to kill every day and ask a different question. And, and what arm is this exactly? I think Olin said it was like, arm yeah, because yeah. it was from their master. He cut off his arm, gave it to Olin because it was needed to power the temple. Oh, 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 right, 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 right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying about the whole like limb transfusion shit. Yeah, I just again, it's been forever, and I was like, arm, arm, what arm are we talking about here? The key to the car. To be fair, that was almost like, like a year and a half ago. At <laughs> this point, I think. That was before the Rosencrantz arc. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Shortly after we started. Ugh. Anywho, um... If you ask Sebastian, uh, there's no real major benefit to con contacting one person over another first. His gut feeling is right of him, because, like, I mean, he's in charge. He'd be able to get the word out pretty quickly, he assumes. And what was it, y'all? I was sorry, I was kind of reading lore. 
catch up on, on the moment. What were y'all planning on doing? Looking for preventative stuff. Yeah, so essentially while Golan figures that out over the next couple of days, Finwoods was going to ask questions as needed of the walking stick to see if he could figure things out. Um, like, what can protect someone against magic that's literally just death? Uh, and then like, what the magic gemstone is meant to contact. Okay. Um... First, when you ask protection against magic, are you asking about the whatever this effect is specifically, or magic designed to cause death? They will produce uh, two different this answers. Is specifically, that was just so overwhelming. Um. All right. When you ask that. You were met by an ominous female figure. The shade states simply, There is nothing that overcomes death. Or at least, nothing but him. Death merely follows in his wake. He's the king of non-life, and he forever shall be. Bimut does not like whoever has to repeat that to him. He just pouts. And then if anybody has a question, feel free to throw one out. But I guess also the, uh, what is the magic gemstone meant to contact? That's right. And, and this, this ever presence of death or whatever. Well, it did seem to have a wilting effect on the plants. It did not kill them. Thus, whatever the effect is probably wasn't the actual thing that killed Olin himself. Okay. So just... Lingering it's, death stank versus the actual whatever spell or ability like killed them. Yeah, no. Um, so then he thirsts protect- for vitality. Kind of gives you an inclination onto what exactly the method of death was. Probably. Sometimes you just treat a man like a Capri Sun. <laughs> like that. Uh, so. <laughs> The stone in question uh, as you uh, speak into it you get nothing. Which could mean a couple of things. It could be a not renowned object unfortunately. Meaning no one really knows of it. Or it could be a newer designed object. Meaning that no one has died to leave a shade that might know what would what would have happened with it. I mean, does the dragon know? <laughs> the dragon died. That is true. Um... I don't know if a dragon can speak in uh, weird uh, soul uh, smoke cut. That's not quite how the walking stick works, unfortunately. It's it's mostly uh, you get a bonus on a check that tells you of it. And normally to this check, you don't... This item doesn't apply, unfortunately. No worries. I just also wanted to throw it out there that the dragon is fucking dead. That's fair. Um, then I guess also the additional question of how to defend against um, spells like the one that actually killed all them. That just drained you of your life force. Uh, unfortunately, you get Olin's spirit again. 
who answers ominously as thus. It was no spell nor ability. No, the fate I suffered was merely to his hunger. Man, they just vampired him. Hey guys, can we call the first lord? <laughs> can we get him on speed dial? I was gonna, I was gonna talk to Radovan first, but uh, yeah, we can talk to him first. Or I don't know how you reach out to him, but you're welcome to try. However. All right. As you do so, uh, well, you, you try to use the rock size. That's the best way to possibly, you know, connect as the two are connected. But as. Uh, well, yeah, when I close my eyes, I can see what he sees. You see darkness if you try. Damn. It's just from the perspective of the eye. No, the, we went over this whole thing. The item says that you share your vision, not from the eye. Oh, did we? Yes. It's still darkness. It doesn't matter. I think that's <laughs> what I also said last time as well. Goddamn shadowy bastard. Well, we had been talking about him seeing through my perspective. Finwith had not been trying to creep on his. Oh, um, unfortunately, you see only darkness. And as Olin attempts to, con or Golan attempts to connect to him, uh, he seems unable to do so. Yeah, he's probably like super protected from that kind of shit. Knows this game too high and connected to a Lord of Shadow. Hmm. Or has been tossed into the wake already. That'd be great. Probably not. Oh, no, yeah. but... You said Ishtar Sword had the spirit of something in it? She might be the next best option then. Yeah, she kept talking to it while we were in the forest. That's worth a shot. And now y'all have looped me into talking to myself, so this ought to be fun. <laughs> have fun. Finwith does the, like, in the back of the call thing, though. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> All right, speaking to Ishtar and to Nox, uh, Nox is familiar with the Midnight King and gives you all some information on him but warns that uh many heroes in the past have attempted to fight the nosphoros and have failed in doing so his throne is literally littered with the weapons of prior heroes who've tried uh she gives you information as thus Ringham in his time was a renowned warrior one uh, so much that even her brother recognized his talents even in his youth in Ringham's youth I should mention uh <clears throat> His skills and ability were so much so that at one point in the past, he even attempted to fight against the gods themselves, marching up to death's doorstep, demanding back that which he had lost. And in his arrogance, he spited death, and thus death spited him in return. For now, he is forever separated from that which he prizes most doomed to live a life of immortality and to be constantly consumed by the very thing he spilt on his way to freeing them now doomed he must feed on blood and he must always be one step from death 
never crossing the boundary, but always in its presence. Hmm. So unkillable. Got it. How did Olin want us to beat this guy anyway? <laughs> Call the drugs. <laughs> no, well. no, what was his plan? Like, turns around with the walking stick, like, Olin, pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> What was your master plan if we can't kill this guy who is death and is also being fucked by death eternally? How are we supposed to kill death? Death man. Hmm. Do you actually go to the walking stick and ask how to kill the non-life king? Fuck yeah. <laughs> he does. I don't know, first this whole conversation, like, while they're on call with, like, Ishtar translating for Doc, he absolutely does. Like, no, fuck this. All in. What the hell? All, All right. right. That's fair. It was definitely All in's game plan, right? Yeah, it was. He knew more than Golan. He knew we were supposed to go tangle with the dude. Like, what the fuck was the plan? All right. Uh, you go and ask, and what is your question specifically? What was the plan to take this guy on? How are we supposed to defeat Brigham in any way that matters? All right. So what was Olin's plan to defeat Brigham? You go in. The shade of Olin appears. And he says... Unfortunately, I had not come across a solution yet. I feel that I was close. But I have no idea how to kill one that is neither alive nor dead. The fuck leads? Are you chasing that you think you're close? But I have no idea. Unfortunately, the stick don't work that yeah, way. It's I, not I talk know, to I dead. Was, well, I didn't do it in the voice anyway. That's fine. Well, tomorrow, unless we think of something else, I can ask him what his stupid lead was, that he thinks he was close. Waggle stick in the air. Stasi thanks Ishtar and Nox for their help. Ishtar responds with, I hope everyone's doing okay. Hope Finleth is okay. Oh yeah, we killed a dragon. It was really fun. It didn't last very long though. But I can turn um, part into a dragon now. It's very loud. There's a pause of shock on her end. I'm happy for you. Thanks. Also, don't forget to bring any parts by if you want me to make something for you. Oh yeah, we have a whole bunch of things. Isn't that right, Sebastian? Ended the, up a the mental strain of carrying all that. <laughs> you should see the giant ball of frozen blood we have. I'll take your word for it. I'm sure Doc would be happy to see it too. Wait, your friend can be happy? I'm sure he is somewhere. He never smiles, but I'm sure he's happy at some point. I don't think I got that impression from him. He does smile, but it's only when he's being catty and mean to someone. <laughs> I mean, that's true, but anything to do with, um... That's more of a smirk than smile. It's the closest thing he's got to a smile so far. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess we will figure out, um, how to kill something that death won't let die, because... Well... Thank you, random cat that got in here. I hate you. <laughs> Thanks for storing his two cents in. But yeah, uh, pissed off gods, pissed off death, now can't die. And it's just making other people die instead. Alright, and she eventually closes the connection. 
Alright, all right. what's your next course of action? Did Olin have like um like a place he like worked in here? Would he have notes in the work, Olin? Mm, I don't know. I since you all returned to the temple in the first place, I don't know much of what he was doing. I could try, but uh, I won't know where to look. We'll help you look for things. He did spend a lot of time at that console. Might be worth looking into. Hmm. Oh. Does this thing ha this have cameras on the inside or are they only outside? Only outside. Okay. I wonder if we could still see, like, from like the entrance area, like ring of rocking up, or if he just worked in here, that's not nearly as ominous. Check the security tapes. Check the tapes for our found footage cryptid uh, film. <laughs> but I guess we'll help Golan uh, look around and yeah. see if we can find anything of Olin's and. Uh, the next day, Finwood will ask about uh, whatever leads he had. All right. Well, so a few things. Looking around, there's no visible notes, but it does take Olin some time before he finds essentially like a notepad document inside the system's console. Much of it is just Olin postulating to himself different methods of dealing with the non-life king. And... A lot of it is purely speculative at best. When you ask the rod, unfortunately, you don't get an answer. Again, it's not talk to dead. Yeah, I know. But Finwith also is just trying what he can, so. The plan was something that was, like, in the making and enough people knew about it to get at least that much out of it, but... Unfortunately, that's about where it ends. I don't know. Was there anyone he was contacting a lot? Uh, you do remember he was speaking with the Mages Guild from the uh, the Magus Order. If you can find out how to reach them, uh, maybe through Radov, and if you can't reach them themselves, uh, they will know. Wasn't there also one uh, Hell Knight something? All right. Well, I, I, I'm I'm gonna y'all expend as much resource as you can researching. Unfortunately, if there was a method to kill the No Life King, you would think it would probably be, you know, incredibly hard to find. The long and short of it is, no one knows. It seems to be an impossible task. Hmm. Only one that would be death. Close to impossible. Damn, Olin. Making yourself sound a whole lot cooler, bud. You do get some information on Hringham, though. There are instances of individuals who survived entering the Castle of Midnight, speaking with Hringham, and were left with their lives. Such individuals were particular heroes of note, including uh Oh god, what's his name? Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot this character's name. The one of our famous history boys? Holst. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what's the most insulting name to forget? Holst. Yeah. Yeah. who challenged the monster, but despite besting him in combat, was unable to defeat him, and his attempts were admittedly amusing to Haringham, who quickly rose after being cut down. He was offered a prize from his uh, chambers, and said that the fight was most amusing. It's been a long time since he had fought such a worthy foe. Oh shit, not even Hulse could kill him. 
But if he got a gift because he beat him, maybe if we beat him bad enough... I don't know if we can beat him as bad as Hulse. He kind of like scratches the side of his neck, like thinking about that, like, eh, legendary here. Maybe it was just earlier in his career. It's fine. <clears throat> maybe if we can beat him enough, um, then our prize can be uh, he he stays um, out of... Uh, he does not target um, people like us. When Ragnarok comes? I mean, if he wants to die, then he would be on the side of the world ending, right? Most likely. Most likely, but he's the most guaranteed to survive it. Also, I, I believe that we found out from um, uh, the Lord of Crows that he was working to possibly go against it as well. So. I mean... If they're cursed with never being able to die, surviving the end of the world would be a horrible thing. Perhaps we can we can use our prize to get them to aid us in that endeavor. He kind of just glances over towards the center of the control the body had been, I assume they'd move it eventually. He'd like a nice burial in the Forever Gardens. He's allowed. No one else. Parker Park, that's my house. Uh, by their oh. tradition, they have a funeral pyre. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Let's see. Ah, I did write down notes. Thank God. Uh, he's apparently moving to retrieve his lost book, The Book of the Dead. Uh... Oh, the one the the black sun has. Yep. Actual, actual time spent in his castle is limited without his permission. Well, if he's not there to give permission and it's just there, then we kind of just could have the run of it, right? Possible. If he's yeah. not getting the book. Uh, the castle of midnight can be entered once a month. That's Starting good. at midnight and going till daybreak. Um, he's one of the few who senses the approach of the messengers. Uh, waits in his castle at midnight and is bringing together undead demons, elementals, and even young dragons. Flashes back to the dragon we just killed. What's another dragon? Wouldn't be a challenge for us. Or at least this is the notes I have. If anything's changed since then, GM, please let me know. Nope, it's all good. Okay. The only thing more dragons means is uh, different types of uh, meat breathing. <laughs> As if you could actually breathe fire. Yeah. Like... Hi, Acer. Then we'll still ask questions of the stick if anybody has them, but otherwise he's kind of tapped out for the moment. Uh, I mean, Sebastian will eventually have a question for the stick. Uh, choose. which is how do you uh, pilot the temple? Unless Dolan's able to figure that out with the uh, arm. Might as well ask the expert. <laughs> You do so. When you do, you don't get the shade of Olin. Mm -hmm. Instead, you get a much taller individual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Deva. Yeah. Uh, when they tell you the procedures of doing so, none of you understand what the, they are. It's fine. We're all just writing it down, and Dolan can figure it out through context clues. It's all in geek speak. No, we can ask the hologram to explain yeah. it. Uh, Sebastian is spending most of this time because, like, dang, Golan feels bad. But he's also in this moment, like, really wants to, like, crunch on, like, learning the language and learning how the controls work. This, this, like, ship or temple is, like, pivotal to some of the plans he has. So how he much needs... time do you wish to dedicate to doing this? 
uh, all the time we have in between, like, group combos or planning, he is spending all this time doing this. If someone needs him, they can come get him in the library. Let me rephrase this. How much time are you planning on spending on this? Oh, um, probably a good few years. Got a few more years until your younger brother's old enough to train. Yeah, he needs to wait till his, till his brother is actually like able <laughs> to be trained. They're still a baby. He's got time. Okay. Anyone else have anything they're trying to do? Like in the long general sense, or <laughs> dealing with Haringo? Well, I mean, in any of the senses, I suppose. Anastasia will probably be in the library doing as much research as he can on Haringum. We can always look into like things that he would have under his control. Other undead. Uh, see if the Deva knew anything about messengers or Lords of Shadow and such. Let me run the rest of them over. Okay. Well, if left unaccosted Sebastian finds out, and to be fair, this has been something you've been doing since the beginning. Yeah, the moment he saw this thing, he was like, I'm going to use it. Uh, putting your full power to it, not worrying about adventures, just dedicating your full mental aptitude towards it. In about three to four months, you start to get a grasp on how the language works and how it operates. And with Golan's help, you begin to understand the systems and how they work, and you you get that you get a, you get ten in your science. Ooh. Science. But you start to gain access. And you gain full use of the facility. What would you like to do with it? Uh, in that case, he is creating it to be a perfect base of operations. Uh, because he understands the importance of it, he does not change too much from the uh, you know, monitoring uh, kind of station it is, but they if they're going to properly act against the apocalypse uh they are going to need a way to get around quickly efficiently and have a mobile base of operations making sure that a lot of people can be housed in this area if needed um finding contacts that might be willing to uh help out but primary essentially he's making this a hub world is a good way to view it all right well uh unfortunately there's really not much to do many of the rooms well open there are some people there but it's not like there's a system that's like add more room you know put all the stones on the platform then we could just add another utility like oh come on we can't upgrade the castle it's not a little, no like, vendor that's like, you guys uh... found the upgrade what? yeah we'll upgrade stuff <laughs> unfortunately well, this could be a good device for flying around and everything like that. It's limited by the power supply. A lot of what it can do allows it to be gone for up to a month, which, to be fair, could get it across most of at least the northern part of the old continent. Then he's going to invest some time in seeing if he can upgrade that part, maybe. Is there a way he can increase its energy? Unfortunately, you would need another, like, core to this place and the one that that has is already pretty massive yeah hmm. i'm sure there's a room we're not using we can just convert that into another core room and he's gonna spend actually a decent amount of time trying to solve that problem because if so he would really like to uh uh you know make this thing able to cross like the continent if possible Unfortunately, you lack the knowledge 
you can pilot it and operate it, but you don't have the crafting skill nor a cult skill nor anything to the hologram laughs at you. Really get the grasp of it. Sadly. Well, then they at least have something for the northern continent that they can use. And to be fair, there's a lot of bullshit going on in the northern continent. The northern part of the continent. Like uh it I guess perspectively, you guys have an RV, you know, like y'all have a, a decent RV, like a 2000s RV, right? Like you can't really put a bigger engine in it because it's not meant to go that fast. Like there's, you can't put more than gas in it. And like, it's really hard to make it anything different if you wanted something that's a little bit more efficiently built and everything you'd have to start from the ground up yeah and like i said none of y'all have that kind of expertise but you can pilot it and look at olin's notes which mostly revolve around the aspects of what can be done about the the non-life king and most of it are just postulations like okay what if we can turn him into a state where he can die again is that possible maybe we can get a deity of some variety that has you know a higher level of power to do this for us just two divine beasts on the list that might work. Clearly, we just need to go back to the prism of Noah and just 100% it. <laughs> so is that too? Surely, what that. we'll get at the end is a cool prize where we can be like, hey, uh, super morally ambiguous, fucked up deity thing. Y'all wanna help us fuck up the undead dude? Arthur in the background, <laughs> like, it's not worth it. But yeah, this is unfortunately, I mean, to be fair, this problem could be solved by a bunch of jocks. Probably wouldn't have been a problem for all that long. <laughs> and to be more fair, even with some of the smartest people you know around, it's Nox herself deems this a nigh impossible task. And she's a uh, a Lord of Shadows. Well, cool. a, a, fig, a fragment of one. Sounds like the Lord of Crows sees it as, uh, as well. I mean... Lord of Crows is busy getting his own army together and dragging it to the mortal plane. That's the thing with many of the messengers. They would not be called the, the Harbringers of the End Times if they weren't unstoppable forces of nature. Stopping Hurrium would be equivalently to trying to fight back against a tsunami. Is Hurrium one of the messengers? He is. Oh. oh well, there you go. Told you he'd want to die. He's going to destroy the whole world. Then maybe he can die. If everything else is dead, then is the concept of death really... Anyway. This was brought up before, and I, I, I don't fault you for not remembering, but... Yeah, Malekith is also one of the messengers. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I see. The messengers are the... Designated by the church as the most powerful beings in Gaia. And there's a prophecy that when the messengers all begin to move, the end times are nigh. Well, we gotta go fetch Ergo from the church. That's the only one of them that we know of that is currently being held. Shit, like a the Ergo, yeah. Yeah. Reading Rainbow. So, yeah. All that you're left with is that some people have survived fighting him. 
by giving him a good enough fight. And Who knows how helpful that is. My only other two that I can think of is Air the First Valkyrie and Thanatos the Aeon of Death. <laughs> oh, great news. Alexi can't think of either of those. He can. They're on the Divine Beast list. Oh, that's right. You did get that list. I did. Uh... I mean, we could we could really try the, uh, let's give him a fight so good, like, hey, by the way, what happens if you, uh, if you do the end of the world and you're still alive? Would that be, like, a fate you want? Wouldn't like, you don't even have the entertainment cooler? of us coming to kick your ass. Wouldn't, would it be cooler to fight against fellow messengers and possibly anything, like, divine level? Because maybe that'll kill you. If something has the power to destroy the world, you know, like take you out you could literally just get it to destroy you honestly that if get your vengeance gonna, on the gods finally if we're gonna do it anyway that feels like it'd be the way <laughs> it's it's an attempt <laughs> but what do we ask for for our prize that just yo consider this uh also our prize uh help us fight against the other messengers and stop the other world Personally, Finwith would like the A tier to just brick him again. But this time, actually do it. So, <laughs> you know, it's I mean, to be fair, we, we started 45 minutes late. So this is partially my fault for not getting everyone in gear sooner. But uh, it's past 8. We are getting to the endish stuff, and I feel like if we don't do it now. Well, it... normally our planning would take a whole session anyway yes. before such a big fight, and you're trying to have us plan in a wrap up game. Yes, which is guys. why yeah. I'm 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 about to offer. So. Do you all just want me to, to, to speed it up, get you to the answers, and get to, I guess, the big decision? Yeah, besides their research, the only thing that Finwith has to do with his time is uh, train with the rest of the party, and then, like, if anything gets anywhere near the castle's uh, video cameras that looks cool enough, he's gonna go maul it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's fight Haringham, possibly convince them, and then deal with uh, the future of Sebastian Jr., and that's all I need to do for this game. All right. Lacking on resources, you all make the decision. You might as well go face him. Maybe you'll figure something out there, but you don't seem to have any other recourse unfortunately just fighting normally works for Finn with it'll be okay right <laughs> so you go to the location on the castle of the castle of midnight standing there on the night of the full moon in this area uh let me pull up some more thematic music Yeah, let's see this one. It's a cloudless sky filled with starlights in the moon that seems ever larger than it normally is almost as if it is looking down into this large open lake high in the mountains the water is eerily still glass-like in a mirror of the sky above as you all wait in the darkness, 
It gets cold. So incredibly cold. And... Suddenly, before you realize, reflected in the water is the Castle of Midnight. A gothic style, large castle with large arching bridges to a nearby mountainside. And after staring at it for a moment, you look up and you see manifest in the real world, the castle is made. Unfortunately, y'all don't have the luxury of time as the castle seems to be about a half mile away and you have until dawn to get through it. So, hustling, you make your way around the long, the wide lakeside, traveling up the mountains, and as you do so, you're confronted by a small white dragon. This one, much younger than the ones you fought before, is not a threat <laughs> to you all anyway. It takes only moments for y'all to deal with it. Two rounds, I'd give it at most. Before uh, you make your way through. The bridge that leads to the castle is completely covered with walking undead. Again, undaunting for y'all as you bust your way through the ranks. The sheer number mean nothing before your might as you cut and cleave, moving through or flying above the horde. Two much more imposing, heavy armored knights stand near the gate. These are much larger, heavier fits. And clashing against them, you find that they are incredibly strong. It's a somewhat more arduous battle. These things hit incredibly hard. Some of you become somewhat injured in the exchange. As these are two level 11 knights. But you manage to defeat them nonetheless. Not wanting to waste time, you break in through the castle's front gates using Arthur's ability to manually open them himself. Arthur. Sebastian. And. Uh, uh, I knew he would help us. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, guys. You begin running across the inner plaza. Many undead still remain. Some slightly higher level undead, though not enough to threaten you. Large beasts like macabre amalgamates of corpses. And even slayers, which are you know, level 5 large undead that, again, y'all cut through with no problem. Their size just makes them easier to kill. As you all come busting through the ranks, you eventually make it to the main building. And as you open up, its entire entry-level area is just a large throne room. And in massive piles on either side of a red carpet are weapons of all varieties and kind scattered about and sitting at the end is a man not too larger than life you know your average human size his features while rugged are not particularly attractive his skin though is quite pale and his body seems rather 
wiry. And he sits there looking at you all just with a big grin on his face. One second. Got to add a little bit of flair for this part. Welcome. I hope you found the accommodations inviting. The voice echoes through the large, empty hall. Powerful and robust. Despite being over a hundred feet away, his face still or his voice still strikes you as if he was just meters. Please, come in. Alexei, almost expecting a more like immediate fight, sets his uh, bass sword across his shoulders before entering. Finwith follows in and kind of cuts to the side, not quite circling away from the group, but uh, spreading off to one side slightly. On this dossier, it does the same thing as Finwith, but on the opposite side, making sure they're not too close. Sebastian enters as well, following behind all of them, looking as stoic as ever, and uh, analyzing everything in the environment and hurrying him to come up with some sort of plan. As you all approach, almost in formation, he can't help but laugh to himself. Getting closer, the echoing effect seems to reduce. <laughs> Why do you all look so tense? At the moment, I don't intend to fight you, only to speak. I do recommend, though. There is nothing you can do to gain an upper hand in this fight. He speaks with a level of certainty. That doesn't bode well. Sebastian probably can see. Oh yeah, he's completely right. Both in insight and tactics. He probably comes to that conclusion before he says it. Yes. Yeah, strangely, like, the lights went out in our house? No. What the fuck? Is your power for your computer still on? Yeah. Was it just my lights? Maybe it's just the light bulb. It might just be the light bulb, because my light's still on on my desk. <laughs> There's concern because, like, the major light in this room just went out, and so we're like, oh no. I mean, if they're, are they yeah. all on the same line? Maybe you go trip a break or whatever? Celeste can now turn them off with her mind. <laughs> She's gonna warp through the shadows. Watch out, she'll have a oh, no. surprise. She's learned from the best. You'll have a negative 80. My light bulb room's burning. Cameron, don't turn around, but I think Celeste might be behind you right now. She is. She's I in the bed on his desk. 
Oh, she's got a knife. She's moving in. <laughs> she has knives. She has settled back down in her bed. She has said not today. Oh, my hip is going out. <laughs> That's where the headlight went out over, too, though, did it? No, that wasn't on. It was just that wasn't on just my light? Okay, cool. That's yeah. unfortunate. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. That, that un unsettling thing aside, I thought our internet went out, and then I continued hearing Alex, so. Yeah, apparently my light bulb and my light just burn out, so ominous. Ominous starts to this guy. Cast the Dia <laughs> cast in darkness suddenly. Ah, fitting. But yeah, you know, you look him over, and the thing is, is he's looking at you all as if you're nothing but playthings. Fair. I mean, to be fair, when you're stuck inside all the time, and this is your only source of entertainment. The dude's fought holes. Yeah. And like a so, thousand other girls. Tell me. What can I do for you, and... My, uh, I guess, position as a host. Kind of tense a little. If you don't want to fight, why did you eat all them? Mmm, the magus. Ah. <sighs> I sent out an invitation, and yet no one answered. So I had to go out. Unfortunately for me, there was someone quite close by. My apologies. He just bears the bare teeth. I understand your anger. Unfortunately, this world is built upon death. And oftentimes, for one to live, another must die. I'm curious. The stories say that you cannot die. But you still need to feed. If you can't die, why would you still need to feed? That's true. I cannot starve nor cross that boundary no matter how many times I've tried. But even I have my limits. I'm left weak. And suffer endless hunger even now I still feel the pangs if I am doomed to live I must at least not suffer through it but it is more than that a great shadow lies over our world and it's ever growing. And I refuse to live out whatever existence remains after the great collision. I do not want to suffer it alone. So you wish to prevent the end of the world as well? I do. It's up to you if you want to insight that, Alex. Certainly try. He tells the truth that it's very matter of fact for him. So if you can't die, then... These messengers aren't supposed to be able to be beaten. How do you plan to fight them? If we can tear through those things, he points behind them at the uh, army they just massacred. 
What help are they going to be? <laughs> Wars are not fought with champions. And you cannot be everywhere at once. Not even I can. And while one must walk through the filth, it is still much slower than walking the path of this as if it were stone. You all seem to know about the upcoming, well, tragedy, at least in some regard. We have met with a, another one of the lords. Lords. Uh, shadow lords. Ah. Malekith, no doubt. That's true. When the end times come, those with the power to do so will reach out and try to grab what remains of the world and shape it in their own will. And while I'm not too eager to take on such reins myself, there are some hands the world cannot be left in. And even if I have to fight myself, I will do so. Do you know who the others are? I have some ideas. Though my knowledge is rather limited within my halls. And I can tell you this. Each and every one of them are far more capable than you mortals can even comprehend. Have there ever been a mortal strong enough to fight any of them? And win? Sometimes. But fate works in mysterious ways, and when one goes down, another rises in its place. Whether that being was actually one of the Harbringers, or just a step below, it's hard to say. It seems like the world itself wants to go to war with it. All the beings that live within it. But I know for a fact none of you are capable of doing it. Still got a few decades. Said your stuff. The war, war is not, not one with champions. champions. Doesn't mean that we aren't going to fight it. And you will lose. You are not strong enough to contend with the ones who matter. And you didn't bring enough forces to even deal with what I had laying around, having to deal with it yourselves. You're all children playing as kings and queens. He just shakes his head. Thrones are for other people. Others who are better at rallying. That does not mean we won't fight. And can't. We don't have to win. So long as the world does. And you are not one of the fates. How would you know? 
<sighs> I see my words won't get to you all and you won't send the reason. As much as to be expected, though. What reason do you want? The reason that you refuse to accept. All right, then. He stands up. I guess he might as well get on with this. You'll see what I mean soon enough. So, how would you like to do this? Would you all like to come at me at once? Or would you like to trust yourselves one on one? <laughs> For one-on-one. Uh, sorry, the other one. <laughs> for all the I, listen, the I pressure's getting like to him. Man. I would really not like to do that one. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm sure Sebastian could take him on his own. Mm, he knows his place. <laughs> if, out of everyone, he understands the power difference. Best fights are the ones with brothers and us. All right, then. Hmm. He kind of goes around his throne, looking at all the weapons, picking them up, and inspecting them lightly before chucking a few over his shoulder. Everything he doesn't take, feel free to grab, Sebastian. Ooh, that's Just nice. a rain of swords flying through the air. Oh, wait a second. Is he a supernatural creature by chance? Oh, wow. uh, what do you think? It's hard to say, I guess. Probably, I maybe. You're gonna whip out your big boy sword? Yeah. I'd like to do, for the best. Uh, plus 20 damage. Oh, yeah, Lawbringer. Yeah. Be fun. If I can actually fucking hit him. All right. He goes around picking up various weapons and he looks at you all, shrugs to himself, and he picks up a big sword and lifts it up and onto his shoulder. This seems appropriate. Oh, I feel like a big insulted. <laughs> he looks it's literally in his modus operandi to fight you guys with the weapon that you use. Yeah. <laughs> doing the Dante thing where he taunts Nero by revving his sword. <laughs> oh no. He saw your buster here. blades and he's just like I can do you one better. Finn, what's just accumulating stance up ready for the fight? Uh, the moment he's like out of his throne looking at weapons, Sebastian would like to uh, focus on uh, ballistics. Okay. Um, this is about a bit as big a fight as big fight gets. Uh, Alexi would use the transformation in the awakening. Okay, dress it up for us. Having gained a modest amount of power since then. There's a sudden chill that kind of fills the room as his eyes grow a very vibrant light blue and energy begins forming around him almost taking on the aesthetics of a blizzard inside or around the area that he stands uh, he raises the frista as it seems to be almost emanating the same vibrant light blue hue from it and he readies himself for combat Anastasia accumulates to use his small warping ability if 
he dodges, and he still manages to hit him on the first go. Sebastian's sword is unwraps itself and is psychically drawn from its sheath on his back. As it's undrawn, he creates electricity around it and controls it. As uh, as it sheets, the parts showing from the blade begin to crackle and spark out with electric blue electric energy. As it eventually is completely engulfed, the blade, and it is pointed at him over at a ringham over his shoulder. As he continues to uh, focus on ballistics, he's going to charge it as much as he can. The half dragon abomination that Finn turns into is further warped by the bear. It almost looks like a, um, almost like a creature covered in like a, like Spanish moss or old man's beard, uh, but it's long trails of the like dark brown fur with these like uh, the red and uh, orange braids streaked with blondes his uh, own strawberry colored hair he looks like a half dragon gone something akin to tribal massive and streaks of smoke on every exhale curl up across his face almost like the ignis form but not quite so consuming But he growls, the piles of weapons uh, tremble slightly. The whole room feels the tinkling sound of metal. When y'all get ready, he just sits there, standing in front of his throne cocky sword over his shoulder as he's just like, when you're ready. Take all the time you need. Finn with drags in a deep breath and he is going to use a breath weapon to give the others cover to uh, close in and do their thing. And, you know, to hit him, but... Alright, I need everyone to roll initiative for me real quick. Dice, if you could roll above a 40. A 40 or like a 20. Yeah, I figured that'd be around where Anastasia would be. <laughs> yeah. Alright, Anastasia, you have the jump on him. What do you do? Is this room well lit or are there shadows throughout the place? Um, it's dimly lit in a lot of areas. There's plenty of shadows to jump around. I mean, he is, like, known as the true vampire, after all. Do you think if you, uh, Nosferatu him, <laughs> that you'll get some sick blood boons? I don't think that's how that works. Now crunch him like a Capri Sun. If you drain him, he'll be weaker. That's what he said, right? <laughs> Runs at him. But half, as he gets halfway along the path, he shifts into the shadows coming up behind him for a good attempt to hit him from behind. Fording dark and darting back out so he's closer to the shadows for a quick escape. All right, so you jump in the shadows coming out behind his throne, jumping in at him. And go ahead and make an attack roll. Okay. 
And you leap at him from behind at a superhuman speed, and just as you're about to close, it doesn't even look like he moves until before you know it, his weapon has parried you aside. And he just looks up over his shoulder at you as you disappear behind him. Uh, Finwith. You're, you're going to breathe on him? Yup. Alright. Let's cover it off. Well, I saw say said that he jumped away. Shadow jumped away. I mean, in all fairness, if this guy hits hard, he does not want to be anywhere near that. When there is just that off screaming sound of intense fire uh, as he breathes out a cone. I got my contact. Okay, the fire comes screaming at him, uh, and there's just a brief moment before the flame is cut in half and your entire attack is parried away. Fine, half of it was a smoke screen for you. <laughs> go look. It's Sebastian's turn, actually. There you go. All right. Uh, using the fire as cover for his attack, he's going to shoot it out. How long would you say I had to charge up my ballistics? As long as you want. Perfect. An hour. <laughs> Not that <laughs> no, long. No, I'm kidding. I'll take a minute. He's going I'll give to... you up to 10 if that makes a difference. Uh, no, it doesn't. It goes to a minute to an hour. You know, uh, basic animal scaling. Right. Alright, and he will shoot out the sword. Okay, go ahead. Make your projection, don't even worry about the potential. Well, that's fun. I botched the potential. Uh, no, the, the, the projection. I got three. You do have that one? Have no, he used one? it earlier. I used it. Oh, did you? Damn. Yeah. So, uh, you are prepping and you see the fire you launch it uh just as his body becomes uh like just as you it breaks line of sight you're like oh, i'm gonna use the fire now the same swing in which he parted the fire by accident parries your blade in the same move it goes like clattering to the floor and then it just starts like spitting on the ground to be pointing towards him again and just raises in the air all right, Alexi, what are you doing? All right. Uh, Let's dress things up a bit, right? Uh, beginning the run forward as Fenwith unleashes the breath, uh, seeing the sword and flames parried aside, he leaps out from where the flames were, uh, arcing up with uh, ice crystal seeming to follow him and brings down his blade. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack. Sorry, that's a 363. All right. 
as you come flying in on him, he just looks up at you and uh, your blade comes crashing down. He catches it for a moment before parrying you aside. And he makes this all look easy. Despite multiple attacks, he does not look harried in the least. Uh, he put, he taps the sword on his shoulder and he just pops his neck and then he moves in on the one who hit the highest attack score against him, which was Alexi. Fair. And as he approaches you with the weapon, oh god, he has that too. Oh shit. Sorry, I'm looking at all his modules. No worries. All right. Oh, to uh, be an undying vampire who's had nothing but time to master every way of fighting ever of all time. <laughs> he, well, he's not technically a vampire, but uh, close, enough. close enough. He's where the myths come from, technically. Uh, he comes at you at blinding speed. Go ahead and make a defense roll for me, please. Sure thing. Um, yep, that'll be it on the... Three forty defense. Okay. Uh... As he comes in, you block against his blow. It's supernaturally heavy. It feels like you just block something from a creature five times his size. And he looks at you. He nods in approval. And he attacks you again. Make an error defense roll for me, please. All right, minus 25. Or minus 30. Minus 30. Yeah. Minus uh, 30. Or no, minus 25 for defenders. Isn't it 25 for attack? Because it goes 25, 50. No, it's uh, for defenders, it's minus 25, and then it's minus 50 for both. Uh, because attackers, it's minus 30. Alrighty. I think. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's five point difference. If it means five points, I'll, I'll, I'll err on your side of things. Literally, he cannot roll lower than what you rolled, so. Penalties hurt. Make a big difference. Alrighty. Uh, what is your energy armor? Uh, that depends. <laughs> if I know that energy is coming towards me, it can get much higher. Uh, can you do that in the same turn that you did your uh, ass, or ice attack earlier? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a passive, passive ability. I just spend okay. the key points and I can... Oh, and I haven't used my ice armor. So, that's also... You just use the ascendant thing. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, just verifying. Uh, it does look like energy as he's as he swipes at you in the brief second before he strikes you. A blackish red flame coats his weapon. Why did I not read the total? One second. Oh, oh I guess this is only going to give me resistance to the attack. So actually, it's a. Uh, I only have one energy armor, but by spending the key points. Oh, okay. Neat. Never mind then. Um. Okay, so then my armors wouldn't come into play. I actually have six energy armor by spending a key point. 
Okay. Six energy armor. All right. He got 110 over you. So that's going to be 40% of his damage. Amped up by this attack. Uh, we'll reduce that one down because he's not using that weapon particularly. And then from the attack, it adds what? Oh, rough. Okay. Uh, you take 68 points of damage. Damn. As, uh, you go to block the blade, but the energy around it is as sharp as a knife. Cutting through whatever army you have, like, butter, it pierces through. That attack doesn't give him armor pen, does it? Just makes his attack energy and also increases the damage by 40. Oof. Oh, no, sorry. It does pe penetrate three armor. Uh, you actually take 119 damage. That is enough to crit. Goody. All right. Uh, that's going to be 119, the damage he dealt, plus his bonus to criticals. Go ahead and make your physical resistance. Roll 12 at least. Uh, that is 183. Unfortunately, he got a critical of 249. As I rolled 100 on the dice. Hit location. What's your 67? If you have that up. Otherwise, otherwise, I can find it. I don't have that sheet. Um, I put it on my character sheet. I might be able to beat him too. Maybe. Sixty-seven. Oh no, I just have the penalties, not the actual. All right, I'm getting it here in a second. I thought it rolled well, because uh, <laughs> if I rolled like shit, that could have killed me immediately. Uh, 100, <laughs> 100 over is still going to suck. It wasn't 100 over. Yeah, you got yeah. 139, didn't you? No, oh, I got 183. Oh, 183. Oh, my apologies. I mean, he still got over 60 over you. Yeah. Uh, 67 is your lower forearm on your left arm. So, uh, the arm you use to, like, block, it wraps around the blade and cuts into your arm deeply. Uh, you suffer a all-action penalty equal to the amount of damage, or the amount over, which is 60... What'd you get, sorry? I had a 183. I have it in the chat. 83. Okay. And he got... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's going to be a 66. All action penalty. As he nearly bisects your arm. And that's anything using the left arm, yeah? Yep. Hmm. 
He looks down at you and he's like, all right, and he brings down another crushing blow near in our defense roll, please. I guess I didn't say charge key either, so. Just going for broke, I guess. Uh, going to pump two fatigue into this. Okay. Okay, this is at a minus 50. Three twenty four defense. It's not bad. Oh, he doesn't get as high as he normally gets. That's still going to be 40 points over. That's including your... Uh, do you block or dodge? I block. And you have a two-handed or one-handed weapon? Uh, it can be either or. Do you wield it one-handed or two-handed? Uh, one minute. I, I guess, guess usually two-handed. Because that penalty will go to your defense. I see. I don't know if your defense is much, or your agility, or your uh, dodge is much better. I guess it would be better than a, uh, well, maybe not. Let me see. Does your class have a difference between the two? Yep. It would be slightly better then. Oh, I guess my class doesn't, but my stats do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, because I'm using the weapon gives me a plus 15 to blocking. I guess that would only be 10 less. Yeah, it'd probably be better to use the dodge then. Okay. Uh, that would be a 314 instead then. Alrighty. Uh, that being the case, he's, he gets over you by... Bum, bum, bum. Almost, but not quite... 50 points. So, 40 points over. That will still deal, let's see, 40 points over, you have 6 armor minus 3, so 10% of his weapon damage. That ain't bad, you take 17 damage. Alright, not a crit thing. So he comes in, Alexi jumps in on him, and Haringham parries him easily aside, doing a crushing blow, nearly lopping off Alexi's arm, and he comes down with another overhead strike, and Alexi manages to parry it off to the side a bit, taking a pretty decent scrape from it, but not dying. Uh, Anastasia, what are you doing? I'm sorry, I read the key book. Cool part about that armor is I actually only have to spend a key point every five turns for it. That's pretty good. Helped you against that, that attack, that's for sure. Yeah, it would have been better than the one that my Cones Beyond card gives me. I don't have the tactical stuff to analyze this guy for weak points. Might as well attack and, attack and dash away again. Okay, go ahead and make an attack. Thin with your on deck.
crap, I forgot to add the upgrade from the weapon. It's plus five. Yeah. And I believe a plus 10 to the damage. But we'll worry about damage when you guys actually hit him. And we'll see about that. Okay. 292. Okay. You leap up from the shadows again, jumping at him, and he parries you aside without even looking at you before you bounce away. Fenwith. Um, as he closes in on Alexi and there's like, the moment of like oh my god is his arm about to fly off uh, Ben was kind of like takes in like this deep breath and then holds it uh, when Alexi does block it he's okay uh, he rushes in to get close uh, bearing these claws halfway between and goes to swipe and then, as he's like right next to him, just drops his jaw and uh, tries to catch him in the face with a blast. Okay, go ahead and make two attack rolls. Sebastian, yes. you're on deck. And did you say two? Yes. All right. You come running in. Alexi falls to his knees for a moment over the pain of his arm. Uh, you come uh, slashing in with a claw just as he's parrying Anastasia. And before uh, your claw reaches him, he brings the sword over in one smooth motion from his parry to Anastasia, blocking your blade. Just or your blade. claw and pit him just with a second blast. Let you know, you actually matched his defense on the dot with your first attack. Fuck. And uh, you open your jaw to let out the fire and he smirks as his other hand comes up and does a palms right to your jaw stopping the fire in its place and uh, causing you to choke on it a bit as he's sitting there amused. Uh, uh, Sebastian. Uh, shoots over the sword. Okay, go ahead. And that's no potential, right? Uh, you can roll potential if, if you want. Go ahead. I want to get that funny bonus. Yeah, go ahead. Last time it wouldn't have mattered because you botched. And to be fair, since you didn't roll your potential first, you didn't botch a potential roll when you couldn't re-roll it. So, <laughs> you know, small mercies, I guess. Oh, Fate was oh, on your side. You. Uh, that bumps that up to my max. No, wait. Uh, no, 260 up to 280. It's plus 40 on my projection. Go ahead. Granted, I can't get higher than a 320. Oh, then he parries your shot no matter what you do. Yeah. Another shot comes blazing out, superhuman speed, sonic boom, and uh, he just sidesteps it, eyes closed as if he was anticipating it. Alexi, what do you want to do at the moment? I'm gonna I'm gonna be spinning the combat up now, so uh, accumulates and throws on Colinger. Which one was that one? Uh, that's his uh, armor. Ah, I see. 
He also switches to single-handed fighting style, lowering the damage, but at least he won't have that. Yeah, he won't be worrying about his uh, her arm, unfortunately. Yeah, damage isn't mattering right now anyway. <laughs> Gotta hit it first. Yep. Seem to be will probably be detrimental, so he'll just go for a full on strike. This one, okay. You get your armor up and you come up with a strike at him. He sees it again and he uh, looks at you and he holds his blade out and you feel it connect with his blade and you think he parries it off but your blade actually sinks a few inches into his gut and he pushes you away and as he steps back he just smirks at you as you look down and the wound begins to rapidly heal being almost completely healed on his turn uh so I didn't even need to roll the attack. <laughs> uh, I, I have to speed it up. We can't do a full combat. We'll be here till midnight. Fair. And I use that last round to judge essentially where your averages are. Uh, I'm not saying I have to do it. But I do think it would be pretty funny if we could actually land a hit on him and I use the, uh... I mean, it would be a bad idea at the castle, but the blood thing, uh, the blood vine allows me to sustain myself off blood. <laughs> Just play a healing attrition game. He'll win. Yeah. All right. As uh, as he parries you off, he just smirks and he turns to the next person who has been doing pretty well against him up until this point. Oops. And uh, he turns to you on us and he just comes in as a blur the weapon coming super fast you have just enough time to block but you also suffer a little bit of damage from the strike as well as his energy leaks past the blade he comes in with a quick kick to your torso sending you flying back into a set of weapons on the ground i want you to roll for me real quick in acrobatics as a 292 acrobatics. Okay. As you're kicked sent flying across the room, you're impaled on several of these weapons doing we'll go ahead and say that he's done a total damage of uh, about 65 to you. He then turns his blade on you, Finwith, and strikes out at you. It comes whipping by you at, at pretty high speed. I have eight energy armor and a lot of health. That's fair. Uh, he strikes your arms. What's your what's your defense score standardly? Uh, block two fifty. Two fifty. Okay. Uh, he strikes across you, and your arms take up a good majority, only bleeding a little bit. And he just nods, and he's like, "You're a tough one." Anastasia, what are you doing? You're slightly impaled on weapons at the moment. <sighs> it's fine, you'll heal. Oh no, trust me, I'm at regen... What is it? 10 now, so I regen 1 per minute. You're a freak. Love you. 
It's not him he's worried about, he's worried about everyone else. I guess I'm pulling myself up. No point in risking it, might as well just yank okay. the weapon out and keep going. Low collateral damage, but you managed to get by just fine. What do you do? Suppose there's anything in this room I could use to my advantage aside from the shadows. Can I do a quick glance around the room to see if there's anything that looks like it could be useful? If the room is literally anything. covered in artifact weapons. <laughs> I don't know what more you want. <laughs> there's burning, burning sconces, sconces everywhere. It's got a high ceiling. The lighting gets really cool whenever Finn with Breeze, it all goes like high contrast from the uh, light. <laughs> the best thing in these guys is just to hit because unfortunately his key abilities are not useful except for dodging the hell out of things. He goes in for another attack. Okay. You come flying in on another attack. He catches it, but you strike him, and he seems surprised for a moment as he takes a bit of damage, and he just looks, and he's like, honestly, I didn't mean to take it that time. <laughs> he seems to be ecstatic at the moment. Uh, Finwith, what do you do? Uh, Finn with teeth takes a deep breath and then uh, still kind of like grappling, like drops his head down and blasts at his feet. And basically, he's just going to try and like hard tackle him to try and pin him down because trying to get hits on him is been difficult. So he's going to try and like just fire blast tackle the guy and then just dig in, tooth, claw, anything he can. All right. Uh, you, you, you lean in, you shoulder tackle him, and he doesn't seem to resist. You. Tackle him to the ground, breathing a gout of flame right into his face. The whole time, he's still laughing as, sat as ecstatically as you can see just through the flames, his charred face, still laughing with glee as you back up from his body as he sits up. Half of his torso now looks like a charred corpse, but he gets up laughing, his white teeth shining through the blackened skin. Sebastian? Uh, Sebastian will actually... Hold his action for a for a, a spell or psychic ability uh he would like to wait until the next person swings and when he brings up a attack to block actually thinking about it he seems to be in a giggly mood instead of uh not uh blocking i might just blast him with my sword what are you doing does he seem like he's like going to defend himself? He himself? really seems like he's not defending himself at this oh, moment. Then sword electrocuted sword blast like right to him. All right, you you charge it up, railgun sword. It launches through him. His body goes skidding across the ground as he still offers some resistance as he doesn't seem to want to fall. But he's just sitting there as lightning is or as electricity is emanating off of the blade as it's just impaled in this torso. Alexi, what are you doing? Let's see. Uh, you can't get this off in one turn, unfortunately, but you will begin accumulating. And uh, seeing him being pushed back and engulfed in flame, he's still, still gonna, gonna try. try. Uh, he's gonna run over to make his uh, one arm swing okay you come over and do so and he just looks at you and he reaches in wrenching the sword out of his chest and parries you with it sending you to the side he drops the sword ca casually as he begins approaching you his skin quickly healing back uh, you get an action what do you do Oh, another one? Okay. Yeah, I'll put Silent you first in this round. Impaled he crispy. is going to utilize Gun and Healer, uh, which is the one that uh, he begins accumulating even more, and then there's just a torrent of ice around him as he 
uh, quickly there begins mirrors that appear around. As he uh, steps in one, he's going to make 11 continuous attacks against him. Okay. As you're bouncing around using this maneuver, uh, he parries one, then inhumanly parries another, but you come up behind and slash him. He staggers forward, he parries another, even not even looking at you. It's this endless flurry of him parrying one, two, getting struck by another one, wearing him down. His body is getting all filled with cuts, and by the time you're done, he seems barely capable of standing. His body doesn't even seem like it should be functioning at this point. Cut to ribbons, one of his legs was chopped off, yet he still stands. Asasia, what are you doing? Taking, waiting for an opening after Alexi's done and charging him with another hit. All right, you come charging him with another hit. You impale him, landing on the ground. He just sits there, smiling, those same teeth piercing the black skin. And then his body seems to erupt in dark energy. You're forced away from him in this torrent as his body begins to shift change it grows monstrously huge and he only becomes one size a category larger so i think it's like giant or whatever oh, i was about to shout kaiju paddle <laughs> uh, uh, but his features become almost bat-like he turns into a horrid beast. And as he does so, he whips around uh, with one of his claws, cleaving right through your defenses, Fenwith, as a claw penetrates your energy armor. Dealing a sizable amount of damage, not enough to put you even to half, but that was dangerous you know and he's gotten not only faster he's hitting harder uh in this form he begins fighting you all even more oppressively than he was before just when Anastasia you feel like he's got an opening he juts black thorns out of his back, impaling you in several places. Sebastian, you launch a blade at him, which pierces his shoulder, which he wasn't really expecting, getting a really good hit off on him, but he reaches down and grips something under the floor or under some weapons you don't know before he suddenly sends at you flying about seven or eight weapons spinning violently through the air at you what do you do shield all right you throw up your shield and the blades hit you and they hit hard the impact boom, 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 uh ripping through your shield before it finally shatters you get cut up in several places taking a really serious wound yeah yeah <laughs> i i'm judging based on your guys general abilities here uh in this moment finn what do you do uh all right he's going to try to use the uh oh shit this guy's getting even stronger so it's gonna be even harder to do uh shit well i mean he's got a claw like jammed in his side right now right yeah uh, he's just going to reach for the closest joint and just dig in and try to tear it off. You do so. And I would make this a contested strength versus his con. So I had a roll a number, add your, your strength number versus his con number. Uh, does the size change anything about 
Uh, did you change size? I was just curious if the the dragon changed size. Like, no, like the, the dragon doesn't change size. It doesn't give you a size change anyway. Yeah. Alrighty. Just the regular fairy land. Which at least gives me a better strength. Okay. Uh. And that's the roll plus the base, right? Yep. Uh, 19. Alright. You reach in, you grab a tendon, you feel like it is anyway. You wrench, and his body does not move. It's like his entire inner core area is just rock hard muscle. Got 22 on his con. And he just tries to dig to bleed, and that's all he can do. And, uh,. It hurt, but he just seems to laugh and a kind of double toned, horse kind of laugh. Uh, he spins around, backhanding you slightly, uh, but it's very aimed. It just barely clips your jaw, sending your brain rocking around in your head. Because uh, he's going to use his boxing module, which he has. Rude. <laughs> and aim for your head and just crit you in the head. Roll for me a physical resistance. Uh, can fatigue can only be used for attack and defense, right? Uh, it can be used for all actions. This is not an action. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I get a plus five if it's against something that would kill me. Forshay is not trying to kill you. He's trying to uh, give you a concussion, which he does fairly well. To be fair, Fenwith is currently clawing and biting at a joint like a savage animal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like and he just he just goes pink, and it's like your head doesn't even recoil, but your brain just gets knocked around. Uh, you take like a fifty some odd concussion. All action penalty to all your actions. Hmm. And, uh. uh with Finn with. That the resistance to pain and fatigue cuts? Uh. No, it's not pain based. Okay. Literally just messing up your nervous system. Got it. Uh, he then picks up your big, bulky body and chucks it at you, Alexi. Make a strength roll for me, please. At least I'm not an Orbis. Funk. I think this is the first legitimate boss fight we've had where someone picks up one of us and chucks it at the other. That's my thing. I want to hit a motherfucker with another on the strength. That's pretty solid. Actually, you... would a feats of strength help with this? Do you think? Uh, you pass the check. It doesn't matter. Oh, oh awesome. So, uh, you catch Finwith. Uh, it was just a base strength check. Technically, if I was competing with his strength, uh, uh, he can't roll lower than a 17. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. You catch Finwith and you slide across the ground and it's good. He suddenly, same thing he did to Sebastian, reaches his hand into the ground and chucks a bunch of weapons at you both. I know it doesn't actually do anything, but Finwith does, like, addled as he is, try and, like, throw an arm out. Just to, like, further throw his body in the way. Uh, definitely brings up his blade, similar to a shield, to block the blow. Alright. Uh... You do so. You both take some damage and you weather the blow, but that's not the part that's dangerous. The part that's dangerous is while you're doing your best to survive, literal artifacts flying at you at, at you know, like superhuman speeds of strength. 
uh, he comes up behind you and you feel just a jolt of pain as he reaches in and cracks your rear right rib doing some pretty nasty damage to your organs at this point you're all pretty damaged none of you are necessarily life-threatening damage but you're all really roughed up best he gets is an adult snap towards uh, his arm to like get him away from Alexi. but like as he turns Alexi can see that his pupils are a little off and the splitting <laughs> makes them like more obvious that they're off fair he then uh backs away a bit as he begins clapping and laughing he strides back to his seat uh reverting back to his normal human form and he says ha <laughs> i have not had that much fun in decades you're all very interesting as he sits down in his seat again. Large pseudo dragon form just stays hovering over Lexi as he lifts himself up, swaying for a moment before he shakes and settles. Alexi continues accumulating just in case, but the uh, in order to do what he would want to do, uh, his armor cracks and falls away. Sebastian, uh, feeling like the story they heard is repeating itself, his sword just is recalled, flying over to him at the, at the breakneck speed, and then sheathing itself. He gets closer to get back to the main group. <clears throat> you all regroup, and he just sits there, and he says... No need to be hostile. I think I've had my fun, unless you would like to meet your ends here. To be fair, you do have some interesting weapons I'd like to add to this mighty collection. It's just the, like, rumbling, like, gator growl back, but he just kind of shifts away from Alexei to let him stand unimpeded. But seeing um, Sebastian kind of stand down, takes a bit of a cue, still a little on edge and with a Xeon enough to keep the form. No, oh, Sase, she's with a sword. Just slowly moves around some broken armor pieces as some of the wounds start to close. Alexi, uh, Seeing everybody stand down, the general just number everybody has taken, himself included. Um, he uh, places the blade back onto his shoulders. Well, I think you've all earned a reward for all your hard work. I don't think you'll take this living down, though. So. I leave you with a choice. I need the life force of individuals who have significant strength to keep myself in top form. Standardly, my method of doing this is to send out hordes of undead until brave heroes come to my chambers to defeat me. Many stories in your lands tell of heroes who sacrifice themselves fighting the undead king until neither are left standing. Falling to their injuries and subduing me for a time. But instead, it's more like I become satiated 
my job is done, and there's no need for me to hassle the peoples of these lands anymore. Ah, and while your friend before was potent, this fight here caused me to expend more energy than I probably should have. It's hard not to get so invested when such brave, powerful warriors come knocking on your doorstep. And so we're left with this. If you all decide to sacrifice your lives here, that should more than supply me enough until the coming days, I assume. Granted, if it happens within the century or so. You're all more than powerful enough and your vitality would sustain me for, <laughs> well, well, over a hundred years. A worthy sacrifice. Or I can do what I've done for many heroes in the past who've proved to be entertaining enough. You're free to take a weapon from these chambers and leave. To live your lives. To fight me again, maybe in the future. If you deem it possible. Though the horrors won't stop and eventually I'll get my blood price. I'll leave you all to talk about this for a moment. I need to change my clothes. He places a silver bell on the armrest of his throne before he walks off to some back room. Sebastian, like, pretty quickly is starting to look over all the weapons in the room. be honest, I have no interest in dying here. Neither do I. Then with looks to Alexi. Cracking, shifting back down. Too much to on spent. What was that? He just looks to Alexi to see what his uh, response is going to be as he's shifting mm. back. He seems conflicted. He seems to sit there and hold things over. I can't consciously do so. My life is not mine to give. That and a hundred years? Humanity will forget in 50 if he's not active enough. They'll forget and then they'll be reliving the horrors of when he started this madness. Besides... I feel like with enough time, we could take someone like him down. I mean, I know how strong they are now, and it just means it's a new goal. With as much as I've achieved in but a year or so, plenty enough time for when the end times come. We'd have to be fast, though. Or else we'll just keep eating people nearby. He has to get it from someone. But if we could go and see the... Beasts. 
Some might be friends, others we can fight, and we can go back to the prison of Noah. Whatever's down problem. there is... Whatever's down there would definitely be useful. Could hunt good Gehenna some more? I don't know. I think Malekith might kick us out after a while. Or we can raise an army that is significantly enough to overpower someone like him. Would that be before or after? Because it's coming in the next 20 years. Or so it's predicted. I intend to gather enough people that we can actually fight back. It's not just going to be us. There'll be others. I assume there are plenty of powerful people in this world who wouldn't like to see it end. We've met some just in a year. We could find more who will help us kill things like him and fight in Ragnarok. As well, more will pop up in these 20 years. We could save lives by giving our own, but we could save a lot more if we don't. Exactly. He doesn't look particularly happy about it, but... Alexei does not either. Yeah. Seeing this, uh, Sebastian does not voice his thoughts on it. Yeah, no. Yeah. Then, for all in agreement, I believe we best start searching for a weapon to take. In the blinks. I don't use those. I can always um, take them. Just points at Sebastian. What he said. He just shrugs. I have no intention of using it for myself. I'm finding this one as a gift. And he's looking around for something small. Like a like a almost like a really nice like knife or throwing knife or something like that. Anyone against this option of leaving and taking a weapon with you? No. I think they're all agreed that they can do more. Uh, keeping up the good fight. Alright. So, eventually you call him back. You Finwith tell him... Ask, before he takes two weapons, Finwith will ask if he can use a piece of his other one. But the Gnosis might be too high to take anything from it. He offers what he can. A finger. If it pleases you. Which regrows momentary moments after he severs it from his hand. She just scrunches up his nose. What a fucking finger. The fucking finger of Vecna. <laughs> uh, but yeah, his, his gnosis is too high for you to mimic beasts from. He just kind of shakes his head. I don't use weapons. He just kind of gestures a hand at him. <laughs> scrunches up his nose. He seems disappointed, but he accepts. He sends you all on your way. Uh, these items, for my world purposes, will be legacy items for characters down the line. And Sebastian gets two of them. That's what I was intending them to be. Sure thing. So we don't have to worry about that necessarily till later. When the time comes. You'll get to pick some pretty nifty artifacts for some characters down the line. Oh, yeah. Sebastian Jr. is going to get some nice throwing weapons since I'm going to use the throne weapon Ars Magus. <laughs> so, with that... We will dip into the epilogue and then I'll offer what my idea was for the true end to this campaign... And uh, some some interesting facts about Haringham because his stat block is nuts. He has boxing. That's Welcome to Anima. He he's an intermediate grade boxer. 
He also has uh, Defense Against Projectiles, Chained Attack Module, Armor Reduction Module, Increased Critical Module. Oh yeah, he's also a Weapon Master, by the way. And he has a second form, which is his Nosferos form, which is the giant bat monster with Energy he Claws. Got to another Kaiju battle, so. He also has some other cool abilities he can do. His regeneration is dumb. <laughs> It's really guy. I think he regenerates like 20 per turn and then he can spend his blood points to get up to 125 health back per round. Also, unless you are a creature of a GNS's 35, you can't kill him. Hmm. Hmm. So there's a chance. That's what you're saying. <laughs> Not for these characters. Well, okay, I, I'll get to that, but let's let's get to your epilogues, shall we? After, after the defeat, what do you all do? Who wants to go first? I have a good amount to touch on, so y'all can go first if you want. All right. Um, I have some stuff that might involve some of you, so uh, feel free to say no if you don't want to. Okay. But uh, Alexei has some promises he has to keep, which was one of the main things that stopped him from sacrificing himself. He has to adopt a child. He promised his mom. He also, with your guys' help, has drops off 1,400 gold pieces to the home. Uh, he didn't bring money the last time that he came in to make up for it. Um, this is kind of a combination one because they're generally in the same area. Um, he needs to visit the First Lord again. He made him a promise. And uh, he needs to find and fight Wode in a duel. If he does win this fight, um, he would take uh, Wode's elemental core and see if Ishtar could uh, join it with the Freesta so that Wode can always be uh, with a great and honorable warrior for uh, the rest of his days. If that's even feasible. I mean, by this point, yeah, you could probably take Wode. He's uh, he's strong, but y'all are stupid strong. <laughs> Making Herringham even more stupid strong. <laughs> Fair. Um, he needs to visit Ken uh, Kunikita and his master, Kim Bai Jun. Um, there's been something that's just been weighing on him for a long time, and uh, he wants to give him the sword and sword and spar with him again, and maybe learn a thing. Or oh, the two. energy one. Yep. Uh, while he's there, uh, he the knowledge that he has is that it's a temple outside of Mercusius in Phaon. Easy enough. Um. A uh, really big one is preparing for the end of the world in 20 years. So learning more about the messengers. Um, and as a part of this, maybe convincing everyone to go on a uh, Divine Beasts meet and greet slash possible hunting trip. Because you never know. There might be some fun to be had there. If they're not friends, they're food. <laughs> Occasionally, Sebastian will come along with it if he's not busy with other shit. Mm -hmm. He would join you. Any type of adventure that anyone proposes, um, be it just a trip or to visit people or to fight, uh, if Finwith is allowed along, Finwith goes. A lot, also because a lot of Alexi's tasks are things that he also would like to do. <laughs> uh, and if so, if there's ever a moment where, say, he's really busy with some other shit, and he's approached with that, it is the most remorseful turn down you, he could possibly deliver. You've traveled with him long enough. You know that he that in that moment he's like genuinely sorry. Like, ah, oh, shit. Oh man, it's like that moment where there's just tears and it's just like, 
that's the most nicest thing you've ever sent to us. <laughs> well, make sure to throw an extra sword at them, just for you. <laughs> I'm not sure that how with how it would help, but appreciate it. <laughs> See, that's what that was. It helped. You appreciated it. <laughs> Big cheeky girl. Uh, awesome. Possibly okay. revisiting the prison of Noah is another one. Oh yeah, he would tag along to that one. Tear through a couple levels. Nothing can go wrong. And I will place that while he does indeed adopt a child, and with Fen, uh, Fen with earnestness towards this, he's not the greatest father, but he was a lot better than he would be if Fen with hadn't said anything. Oh no, if any of you have children, you have a godfather for them. <laughs> Those were his main tasks he would like to done. Alright. Uh, next. No, let's go. Alrighty. Anastasio pretty much spend most of his time when he's not adventuring with you guys, trying to spend as much time at home with his family as much as he can. Enjoying them. Burning every memory he can. Somewhere along in the journey, though, he does happen to come across another Vital in a similar situation of running away from home. Feeling like they need to expand their potential. And after a while, he ends up striking feelings for them and eventually courting them. Later on enough, before the end of the world happens, producing a set of twin daughters. And immediately announcing Finwith as the godfather. Finwith dunks on his entire family. <laughs> but aside from that, it's just enjoying the time he has, spending it between friends and family. If he survives the end of days, I think it will be time for him to settle down and fully focus on family. Provided everything works out. Okay. Short, sweet, and to the point. Next. Uh, Finwith, when not spending time uh, traveling with the others, uh, joining in on the good fights, he does insist on going with Alexi to the fight with Wode. He just does not take part. He honors that as much as he's like on the sidelines of that epic fight, like hands tight the whole time. Um, probably a little disappointed because Alexi's going to crater him by the time they go back to fight Wode. Uh, but when he's not doing that or trying to be a good influence on all three of them and the respective children that are theirs or in one case a uh, younger sibling uh, Finwith does travel a little bit just to give them their own space uh, and also to become more accustomed with being alone but not lonely knowing that in pretty much any direction he goes, he'll run into one of them somewhere. He knows where they are, and that he has a home with each of them. He still hangs around, uh, circling around Goldar, uh, kind of going back and forth. He hunts on his own when he finds out that there's uh, something interesting or something particularly dangerous to the people around. Never saying anything or taking any reward for it. The reward comes off the uh, quarry in question. But Finwith is... He kind of has the chronic problem that Radovan has too, of having a bit too much love. He's hard to make settle down. He sees so much in everybody and so many people, and he can be a little much himself.
but he's content because he does have his uh, new clan, even if he never calls them as such. They're family. Different than the one before, but better because these ones are his. And unlike the one before, these ones let him shape them. And, of course, he does make his trip to the uh, southern uh, part of the continent one day for the end of the world. He owes Kidwana a hunt, and he wants to see these dinosaurs. That's true. You're, wel you're welcome to go with. Oh, always. Every now and then with will be the one to uh, drag Alexi along the hunt. And we find it fucking miserable. <laughs> yeah, they, they bitch the whole time. It's so <laughs> goddamn hot. Eventually, there's like, wait a minute, wait, that one, that freak, uh, Arthur, the one with the guns. He said he didn't feel cold. Can we just not feel heat? <laughs> Probably feasible. It is a key thing. Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. The big one, Sebastian. Right. The man who has a book written ready to go. He has a lot of things he's going to be doing. And a lot of tools at your disposal. Yes. For I'll do it roughly in chronological order. Uh, Sebastian is going to use the temple. And like he said... He's going to find people to help uh, fight against the end times. Essentially, he is going to pull a Nick Fury and just appear in people's storylines and be like, I, I want you. I have a plan. Um, he goes around finding promising people and helps set others on their way, kind of doing what Colin and Olden did. Um, Golan is permitted to stay and hang around the temple if he wants, but he can do whatever, whatever other things he has going on. Um, he will essentially pilot people around the world, or the areas he can actually fly to, and get people strong under his, like, retinue. Um... As well, later on, he will also attempt to uh, communicate with Horcux. He would like to alter the deal somewhat. He will offer um, more time. Uh, he'll negotiate, make it a fair trade for either of them. However, he wants to increase the number of people Horcux is not allowed to kill. That's the important word, kill. Um, the rule still stands for the party. Um, you cannot fight them. For his younger brother and whatever people, maven whatever people he finds in Horcux cannot kill or seriously permanently injure them. As well, he does say at one point, I will want you to fight him. He'll need to prove his worth against a demon lord. Who's gonna beat the shit? <laughs> he will study the psychic documents on creating psychics. He's not going to put them into practice. He's lived through that. It's not right. However, if there are some techniques to help promote strength from people, he will take note of it. He's going to apply, try to apply them more ethically and actually allow people to, you know, choose to have that life or not. But he's not going to, say, create a bunch of Black Sun Labs and create an army of psychics. He's just going to see if there's anything useful inside of it. At some point, he might even make contact with the, I forget his number, but the tactician that betrayed him long ago see if he 
is in any way interested in working with him. Besides, honestly, what could he do against Sebastian now? And one of the last major things is... You have something to say? Oh, no, sorry. I was using the alt key to tab through some windows. Yeah, fair enough. Seeing, waiting to see if you're going to refute anything. No, no, no. Um, you're all good. Okay. Then, lastly, he will... Once Sebastian Jr. is old enough to train, um, Sebastian will work with him. Which, by the way, he does spend time with his family. He does make a bond that he... With a family, one that's very new to him. Very foreign at times, really uncomfortable. But he pushes through. And he works with Sebastian Jr. He finds what they are proficient in in life. And eventually, certain just skill training, teaching him battle tactics, how to read people, survival skills. Which, to be fair, his father Abraham is probably teaching him that anyways. That just comes with the trade of living where they live. Yep. Um, but then eventually, he'll start teaching him combat. Finding out what he's good at. Um, Sebastian Jr. finds a knock for... Uh, he wants to emulate his older brother seeing that he can move things with his mind and throw things without touching them. He thinks it's amazing. Sebastian refuses to teach him or even help promote him to become psychic. He doesn't explain it at first. He might explain it much, much later. Um, that depends on just emotional maturity, he feels. as it's a pretty important conversation that Sebastian's uh, powers were, tra were taught to him by deep-seated trauma when he was a child. Something he does not wish to do. Sebastian Jr. finds a knack for throwing weapons, as it's the best way he can emulate his uh, his older brother. And it suits Sebastian fine. It means that he can, you know, help show techniques and skills as best he can with his skill set. Granted, he can't teach swordplay. He's never held a sword eventually then all of you are called upon separately to Alexi he he will uh, request that you teach him and initiate him as a frost collier as he's seen the frost collier training and while it's not applicable to everyone uh, he believes that it teaches strong mind and body as well he requests that teaching him how to use key at least the beginner steps as well, he hopes, he doesn't, he doesn't vocalize this, but he hopes that um, Alexi's jovial and friendly personality will rub off in some way. <laughs> he knows how cold he is. He's self-aware of this. He wants to show there's other ways to lead your life. He hopes that they'll have it, some deep philosophical like talks and heart-to-hearts that'll help connect. You're... Sebastian Jr. is left with you for a good amount of time until he, Sebastian comes back. Ah, uh, then he gets left with a uh, an older boy that he trains alongside. <laughs> the moment you said it, I was like, ooh. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen there. Because, yeah, I think that means, uh, I mean, depending on age difference, they could be the same age or like, like literally a year apart. True. To Anastasio. Over in Rosencrantz, he requests that you and your family teach um, proper fighting techniques and social grace. I mean, he doesn't understand etiquette for dealing with nobles, and he doesn't care to. He understands that others find it important as well. He has no way of teaching proper combat techniques. What better than like the guard family for all of these uh, noble houses? As well as instructing Anastasia to do their best to initiate them to many of the, the um, hidden races in the world. There's a lot of resources in Rosencrantz to um, make someone intelligent and knowledgeable in the world. As well, um, also hoping that parts of Anastasia will rub off on on uh, 
on Sebastian Jr. I have to ask, which side are you looking for the brooding moodiness of angsty teenager, or are you looking for the more mature Anastasia that's a dad? Mature Anastasia. Literally, no, Anastasia won't be a dad in the time that uh, Sebastian Jr. will even be alive. Oh, I know. He, he believes that there is merits and strength to having, being, uh, there's good things being outward expressive, but there's importance to being inward as well. He would leave that park and rub, rub off. And also, as well, of um, he feels like more company for Anastasia is the better. Because you said, like, um, Anas was still going to spend time with family even before he has his kids. So you have, like, the post rebellious phase of, like, yes, I ran away from home and did a bunch of crazy shit and then came back and got, like, my ass dumped for it because I didn't ask my family for help. So we're going to teach you, like, yeah, like, you can act out, but, like, remember that your family's actually always there for you, even if it doesn't always feel like that. There's a lot of powerful lessons that Anas can teach from experience. What better to give a teenager than someone who uh, has been through all that and can really properly relate? I'll say, if we, if we match Vitella to human years, by the time the apocalypse happens, uh, Anastasia will not even be old enough to drink yet. If we're going off human years. You could stop the apocalypse where you're not old enough for a beer. The shame. <laughs> it's, yeah. not like he, it, not like, it's not like he would do anything anyway. Like, he has to yeah. drink from someone who's, like, fucked up. Fair. The only way he's ever getting drunk is, like, Finn with being like, alright, let me crack open a cold one with the boys. <laughs> now crack open a warm one with the boys. <laughs> Which of the boys is he cracking open? Uh, oh, he's only got two options. She what? Brain freeze? Or I forget what Finwitz was. Uh, Finwitz has a hearty diet of, uh, you know, a fucking Viking. Gamey. And doesn't have weird ice like aligned key or anything. So he's just, he's just super healthy. But yeah, unfortunately, it's just, it's so hard because, it, like, in the time scale we have, Anasasi will barely have any time to mature by Vitella standards. He still has things. You know. I don't know. He's with humans. His mentality on that might be faster. I mean, it has already somewhat to some degree. Yeah. But just remember, your race lives to be stupid old. So, so if we survive the apocalypse. Yeah, you know, that boy. Technically, your race lives forever. But, you know, you just want the drama of having kids before the uh, end of the world so that you can play one of your kids before the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. It's way more fun. No, no, no not that. I just want the fast. image. Of the... No, I just wanted to have the image of being an uncle. Okay. It's fine. He could just do what Doc does and just extend his life. So it's like, wait, kids? Kids are great. What if I was around for longer? <laughs> what if I just didn't age? And then. You, you could technically learn that spell. You can. It's not, it's, it's not that crazy for key. Like investment. Oh, no, it's super cheap. Yeah. Um, oh, I was talking key. I was talking spell wise. No. I don't, I'm not a regular spellcaster. I only have the two spells. That's okay. fair. But, Finwood. Uh, on Finwood's travels, um, which to be fair, he probably initiates by like inviting to the, uh, the Finch household to hang out for a few days. And uh, asks to take Sebastian Jr. on your travels. Knows what kind of shit you get into, what you like doing. Knows there'll be something along the way to help along Sebastian Jr. He hopes to, uh, through Finwith, to teach adaptability, as it's important to almost take in what Finn does, learning from both friend and foe alike. Physic, at least, like quite literally, from Finn with fighting techniques and actual magic, but it's important to learn from others around you as well. Finn with has helped Sebastian immensely. Um, he is hoping that Finn with's good nature, personality, that caring side of helping those around him, the ones they truly care about, will rub off. It's not something Sebastian can teach and he understands how important it is. There might be other people like him 
that Sebastian Jr. might meet in the future, and he hopes that they can do for others what Fenwick did to him. And as time goes on, there are occasional moments where Sebastian is a little more receptive to physical touch. Um, Sebastian Jr. might get a hug or two every once in a while. He's still uncomfortable with it, but he's proud, like, a good few years in, to note that it is not a phobia anymore. He doesn't like it, but it doesn't scare him. And that is pretty much all he's going to be doing. The rest, honestly, I give I give Sebastian to you, Cameron. You can have this man pull any machinations in the background. He's oh, no worries. <laughs> your, uh, your deal with Horcux is thus... He agrees to your terms. And all he asks for is one year of your life. Sebastian. Have it at the end of the world. Sebastian asks uh, if it'll happen after the end of the world. If it does, he'll say yes. He says it will not. It'll end before. It, 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 the year... He doesn't believe we'll win. Well. <laughs> he has his own preparations for the end of the world. He doesn't say the specifics of what he means by a year of your life. Year off? Your total lifespan? Maybe? He does say that he'll even do everything you want for your brother in that span. Otherwise, he won't follow your bargain at all. He'll try to at least add a slightly different clause of um, he's okay with it as long as he's there for the final battle. If he's not there for that fight, then he's not interested. But he would like to be there. He assures you, you most assuredly will be there. As himself, not as Horka. <laughs> He assures you will most assuredly be there. You know, he'll make that deal. But there was another aspect that he would like to take into account. Um, I forgot about this until now. Um, the other thing he'd like to do... Sebastian's clever enough. I feel like he could get away with this. Sebastian would like to covertly investigate ways to excise the demon, but keep the heart. Mm -hmm. Trust me, Horcux is already way ahead of you on how to exercise this human from his body. Oh, he imagines he's going to do it better because he's smarter <laughs> and has a higher willpower. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Uh, the big difference is he can watch you whenever you do your shit. <laughs> yeah, hence why he's doing it so early. He can do it very sneakily. Uh, sure, sure. If if you can, if you can somehow do so. I mean, I mean, somehow you could do so. Yes, he can. He can act blind and deaf. True. <laughs> You're not fighting on the same check game board here. You're playing I checkers, know. and he's playing chess. Totally. However is Sebastian. I think Sebastian could find a way. I don't think I could. i will also like to remind you that Horcux is still a demon lord. Yeah. But and like, still we're... far stronger than Sebastian is solely by himself. But... And he oldest balls and has a lot more connections than you. Smart player character. <laughs> That's the difference, Horcux. I, 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 I mean, I definitely will say, you can try. I yeah, think he'll certainly try. In your future. Well, he'll certainly try. I have plans. I have plans. Good. I am a storyteller, if nothing else. 
All right, well, that's the backgrounds. Let's talk about a little bit more of what I wanted it. I, first of all, didn't want to end the game this way, unfortunately. We are really struggling to get, <laughs> get this game out, though. And even if we managed to do it the good old-fashioned way, it would have been a struggle. I think just constantly trying to get back into character each time. I mean, this session, which was a highly expedited session, was nearly six hours. Right after you said that, oh, it'll be like three hours. Yeah, I. it's my fault. I'll let y'all sit and spin too much on how to figure stuff out. I should have took a lot more control of the reins, but I wanted to see like what your guys' thoughts were. And I think that's also a problem as well. It's, just, it's a long time has passed since we played. Literally, I believe four months, four or five months. Because I think we last actually played in like November, early November, if even. I think so. So, I mean, we, I, I actually can go look on the YouTube because it streams live, so. Uh, yeah. It's not how I wanted to go. But, for the most part, things progressed. You'd fight the dragons, one of the dragons would find out, fly away. Left that as an open-ended thread for another campaign to solve. Uh, you guys would come back, Olin was, you know, dead. You guys get ready for your fight with Haringham, fight Haringham, and about the way I was expecting. Let's talk about some of his stats before I finish off what I was, uh, what my plans were. So Haringham is a level 14 war master, or weapon master. Uh, his base form, his human form, has 13 strength, 13 dex, 9 agility, 13 con, 10 power, 10 intelligence, 10 willpower, and 9 perception. Is that all? <laughs> he has no <laughs> That's only in his human form. Uh, his, his Nosferos form had much higher stats. Uh, yeah, his minimum to- or his two-hit ability- for anything was I, his worst was boxing at 310 oh, only 310 <laughs> and his defensive abilities his worst again was boxing at 315 i can see why it was hard for us to get a hit off uh he has use of nemesis giving him access to many of the nemesis abilities fun uh, he has scent of lie, so he can actually, he knows when you're lying. He doesn't know what the lie is about, but he knows when a person lies in his presence. Is that, is that split between the normal, the, both the forms, or on one specifically? What do you mean? Well, some of the abilities aren't, or is it just the stats to switch up for his second form? Oh no, this is all base form stuff right now I'm, I'm talking, talking about. about. Okay. Uh, his key accumulations are kind of okay. His highest key accumulation is three. So he didn't have, like, techniques he was going to be willing out at you guys. He did have Liberation of Power, Aras Magus. He had Samael, which was just it's so dirty to put on him. For those who don't know, Samael, you take a bunch of damage when you declare you're activating the technique. And then you get a bonus equal to twice the damage you take when you release it for a guy who has 725 hp he can uh he can rack up some really high samuel retribution strikes against people at literally no risk to himself fair Uh, let's see. I, I, I named off a lot of his modules that he had before. I did give him the defense module to block multiple attacks. Too many bosses I've seen have just been overpowered by sheer numbers from players. So rather, I just rather him be, you know, at his best. He's also a guy who's fought in like tons of wars. He's used to fighting against hordes of enemies. Like, he would definitely have it anyway. Uh,. Yeah, he actually, his his physical stats are so big, he, he had to have an advantage specifically to keep his size smaller than normal. 
That's fair. He'd be sporting like what a twenty six size at base form. Uh, his base form is twenty three, and he goes to twenty six when he goes into Nostros. Hmm. He also, if he decided to, had a artifact weapon called Balmung he could use, and that thing's nasty and would destroy <laughs> you guys. It wouldn't have it wouldn't have been even a contest, really. It would have been very overpowering. Because hmm. it would have made his already higher stats even more redonkulous. Uh and yeah, his Nosferos form had energy, claw attacks, which were nasty, flight. He could conjure bones to come from the netherworld to destroy your soul. Okay. It's a technique, I think, or something he has. I don't know. It's. Uh, I wonder if I could make bones kill someone's soul. <laughs> uh he's also he has this thing where by normal rules he he can't be put on the defensive if he suddenly takes damage so he can just keep coming at you i probably just was just gonna make it where uh you know his his defense was couldn't be reduced by being attacked by a bunch because even if he gets hit he doesn't care all too much oh yeah once he gets uh once he's in his nostrils form when he gets under a third of his life, he gets a plus 30 on all his actions. So those three tens and three fifteens before would just be three forty fives. Oh, yeah, that's to the limit, right? Or it's, it's called on the ed edge of the end is what it's called on his sheet. Ah. So edgier version of to the limit. Oh, yeah. Balmung, one of its features, it has Technique Breaker. If you get hit with the weapon, uh, you have to make a magic resistance check or it breaks any active key techniques on you. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, his Belmong also ignores characters who go incorporeal as long as their Gnosis is not 45 or above. I'm thinking the Gnosis isn't over that. I mean, if he's fighting somebody at 45 Gnosis and above, he's a, he's struggling. Yeah, no, he would be... He would get smashed by someone of that. He's a, he's a Gnosis 35. And while your characters are heroic characters uh, above the average uh for his for his un or his curse of eternal life you guys are a grade two antagonist is what it's called which is you can reduce him to negative hit points if you do he transforms into his nosferos form if he's still in his human form giving him 700 and something more hp which is you know you gotta fight him twice pretty much and uh if you defeat the nosferos form it disappears and cannot be damaged in any way further and then reappears after a day has passed with full life points in both forms you know for the kids <laughs> so he was unstoppable what my initial plan was for you guys was one, this was to show you guys the power of one of the messengers. Haringum is not even considered one of the more dangerous ones. <laughs> no, I figured that because he was capable of going easy on us on hits. And you guys would have nailed some hits against him. Like, I, I let you guys get some legit hits on him in the fake fight, you know. Uh... That's not like amongst the messengers, he has probably one of the best personal power sets. Uh, like in a one on one duel, he could deal with most of them. Not all of them, though. There are some that are worse in hand to hand combat than he is by far. Uh, there are others with other bullshit, though. <laughs> The method I was going to have, because actually when I initially conceived everything, I did intend for you guys to actually beat him in the end. 
what you were going to have to do is, you know the Suter Gate that was mentioned really, really early in the campaign? Yep. I think about it all the time. <laughs> is that I one think, thing I you're just like, it's, it it's got to be a thing. Yep. Uh, you would have found in the notes in, in uh, Olin's console and everything that there was a method to contact uh, Earth itself. The creature so in which the anyway, peak of the world is on. So I can just be friends with it? I mean, sure. Uh, when you do, and when you contact Earth, you get the, you use the gate to go to his realm, which is called Earth's Cradle, which is why this game is called Cradle to Crypt. Uh -huh. And uh, you would have found his fetal form, which is still a massive beast. Like skyscraper, not skyscraper size, but like the size of uh, like the Tacoma Dome kind of thing, you know, big building. And you would have gained from Earth the strongest healing ability in the game that can literally resurrect someone within a day of dying as a uh, as a power bestowed to you by Earth. Hmm. And you would have used this to temporarily, on Haringham, made him vulnerable to death by filling him with so much life, you bring him fully back to one side of the scale to push him off the other side of it. Sick. I want to be Earth's friend. It sounds, it sounds like a friend. <laughs> Love big cool kaiju. Yep. Yeah. Earth is still even in its current state, uh, in its juvenile form. Well, now we have to make sure the world doesn't end so Earth can grow up big and strong. And then not do anything so it doesn't destroy the world by existing. But instead of doing all that for this uh, particular ending, I figured it's best to kind of leave it a little open-ended. Y'all spoke several times on maybe getting his help with future events, and who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe. It would be rude of me to close that door on y'all now. Especially to give you an ending that you didn't really get to earn because I would just hand it to you. So. So clearly, uh, on the, uh, like, because we're going to come back and deal with him a couple times to make sure he doesn't completely wipe out Goldar uh, for snacks. Uh, clearly, we keep doing research, eventually find out about the door, and then it was like, oh yeah, we found that that way back in time. <laughs> uh, go and make friends with Earth, and then we go tell him, like, hey, help us defeat Ragnarok, and in exchange, we'll give you your outfit you want. Feasible. The problem with him is he needs it to stay at his peak form. He can't just not eat. Some well, lives will eat, have to be sacrificed. He can eat the army of the bad guys. <laughs> See, now if he'd been like, I can take a bit of you guys' vitality and just done the like succubus thing of leaving us all at 1 HP, See, presence. unfortunately... I don't think he can, because he's like the incarnation of death now, I don't think he's capable of that. No, see, the thing is, the vitality thing is just kind of the in-game, like, descriptor. What actually it is, is he feeds on blood and death. He must feast upon a dying individual's blood to gain the essence. Cringe. Yeah, a loophole. Yeah. That's why I didn't bring it up. I figured that that just outright would not work. I'm really sad. I would have liked to have dressed herring up, herring him up more, make him more of an encounter, you know. Just didn't have the time, sadly. But I do think that this at least shows the power of the Harbingers. It's still pretty cool. And you would have to face something similar if you fought, you know, Malekit, the Prince of Crows. And any of the other ones, which we'll be tackling in my World Phase 3 campaign, whenever that may or may not happen. God, that's 
some of those are gonna suck. <laughs> yeah. Want to fight a city of flesh? Because one of them is a city of flesh. Oh God! Oh. You kill him or yeah. them? I don't remember. Guys, I know how to defeat a city of flesh. Become one with the city of flesh. Take over the city of flesh. You are the city of flesh. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, we're gonna go the Billy and Mandy route, of taking over the giant monster by yes. letting it absorb us. Got it. Yes. But yeah, a lot of the a lot of them are really really annoying again city of flesh character not necessarily as powerful in personal combat as in his ringham but when you defeat them the first time they just turn into a city of flesh that you then have to battle through to get to their core or the fight just restarts yep that's so cool <laughs> so, uh, anima anima has, again it's like Okay, Anima, I guess you can throw some cool shit at me, but please don't put Hellion Soulbringer in that arc, please. <laughs> oh, God. I can only take so many people to Hellion Soulbringer. Oh, hmm. Change his name to new character. <laughs> you can't steal a man's identity. Come on, have some respect. But uh, I think to finish off, because the stream has now been going for over six hours, uh, I, I just want to say I thank you all for playing this game with me. You know, this is another long arc done. The Rosencrats like arc was probably my best arc ever in tabletop. And it would not have been that way if it wasn't for you all. So, you know, it's been a really good game. Cradle of Crypt was another really good one lots of great characters probably the best chemistry in a party i've ever had honestly true it's fucking They're nuts just all such good friends i love them it's nuts how well they all got along mm -hmm. and you guys are different enough you know like y'all had like jock in the name but like really operated in all at your own paces it was really really good Again, it's unfortunate the campaign had to end in the way that it did, but I legitimately think that if we tried doing it the legitimate way, it would never get done. It's best to have it finish than never to finish. Honestly. I have no regrets about swapping characters at the beginning. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta. I, I Like, I've done it. I know. And I can't <laughs> wait down the line to get the Time Skip Sebastian art be getting i will come get the same artist i have written down their appearance changes they're paler i'm gonna make sure their uh the necklace they were given from their father is still is like visible and be older i i i love these anima campaigns they're so much fun there's something special about about anima like the stories you tell through it yeah well it's just such a wacky system that you can get anything you want out of it if you finesse it enough. Just you wait. I mean, I'm gonna put pen to paper tomorrow. I'm gonna, uh, if everything, if I go as productive as possible, I could possibly have a video filmed by the end of spring break. <laughs> and who knows, future games maybe, if we don't just become Lancer players from now on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it will always be Anima. Well, just what if we just did Lancer in the Anima universe? No, we're not playing the Powers of the Shadows. <laughs> we're not we're that far. Sending in mech suits. We're not that far into the future yet, Alex. We really we got fun, a couple though. phases to go, bud. But um, yeah. So as far as what's going on next is the uh, fa World Phase Two kickoff with the Arbiter game. That'll be a short one, and then... Did you have another one planned, or the one after that be the Heavenly Knights? Uh, the one after that will either be Heavenly Knights or the Inquisition. Okay. Oh yeah, Phase 2 Inquisition goes through uh, some changes. Some. There's going to be some interesting stuff going on. It'll be also be interesting to get the perspective of the Inquisition for once in one of these games. And maybe, maybe the Empire. <laughs> maybe the empire uh, so i don't know when we want to set that up 
I don't know when we're going to get a day to do something regularly all together again. We'll see. Alex. Yep. I, I will do my absolute damnedest to make sure it is a possibility. And who knows, maybe a little bit of Lancer in between now and then will be a good palate cleanser. Yeah. Get back in. I mean, I'm going fucking all in on like working freelance producing videos so I can actually have a, a nice portfolio. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, make enough money working at home that I can uh, actually just keep doing it and stay in, in like all these campaigns. We'll have to see. Um, I'll do some rule write-ups <clears throat> and everything. See what we can get. Uh... Yeah, and then I'll tell y'all. When, when I have more of a date in mind for when we'll get it, and I'll start giving everyone information. But for right now, I just I just don't know if we'll get a day for it. And I like to do something consistently. So We'll figure it out. Uh, yeah. For now, though, I need you to figure out how much experience we got for uh, a dragon and Ringham, just for my sake. Nope, you're not leveling up. No! <laughs> I'm so close. He deserves it, though. Mm, sorry, y'all. Y'all are too strong as it is. Make us stronger. This is nope. worse than Doc leaving off like one point away. <laughs> Sebastian's like, like twelve. Or thirty-five away. I'm feeling pretty good. I was three hundred and fifty away. Yeah, I was one hundred and ninety. <laughs> oh, psh, yeah, well, I won't even level this session, no matter what I did then. See. We just deserve it as our gift. But yeah, no, uh, Doc is literally one uh, experience point. <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> Fucking sadist. Sorry, yeah. 337 away. You got issues, bud. It's a big gap. All right, but with that, I think we'll go ahead and end this stream. Thank you all, present and future watchers like subscribe hope we will see more amazing stories like this one check the entire thing out in uh the watch lists or the uh the playlists on the channel and yeah i'm very happy we got this logged in and viewable for our future selves whenever we're feeling nostalgic all right let's go ahead and say goodbye everyone goodbye maddie night good night Ciao. Goodbye.